it's a little camera out of it. What's going on, people? Thanks for joining me for another live. Uh, I'm just bored. Uh, I'm still going live tomorrow, but I just got bored. Mrs. has gone to sleep. Um, she's not feeling very well. The kids are asleep. It's just me sitting here, bored. So I thought, let's see if anyone, anyone wants to come for a chat <laughs> and make me less bored. <laughs> so anyway, it's bit one store o'clock. And uh, yeah, I hope you'll keep them well if anybody shows up. And um, yeah, just got bored. Literally, that's the only reason I've gone live. Maybe you're just bored. You don't want to do yourself. One of them sort of ones. Plus, where I didn't do a live last week, uh, I think I missed that social sort of side of it, you know. Even though I'm going live tomorrow. Nothing fancy to drink tonight. Just uh, got a few Dutch brewed Heineken's. The small cans of Dutch brewed, if you didn't know. And uh, it actually says on the back, funny enough, like, I got this from Tesco Express. They do sell UK brewed Heineken in there, but they also sell Dutch brewed Heineken in the small cans. And you know, because it says on the back, brewed and imported from the Netherlands. Whereas if you buy the big bottles, the 660s, it says brewed in the Netherlands or the UK. It's brewed in the UK, that one. <laughs> but just because the small one is brewed in the, uh, the Netherlands, they're allowed to say, or uh, what's going on, sub 10? How you doing, mate? Thanks for popping in. Say hello. Jamie Watton, Bush. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you, mate. I'll be back after football. Are you watching football, mate? Enjoy, mate. I didn't even know there was any football on tonight. So how, how are you all doing? How's everybody doing? Don't forget to hit the like button on your way in. It should help get some more people in there because there's only three of us at the minute. Um, I can also share it to my Facebook. That sometimes gets a couple in. Just give me a second. Can you hear me okay, people? Because I sort of rushed, rushed the uh, setup tonight. Wasn't planned. Just got so bored. I thought, sod it, you know. I, um, so Mrs. is not feeling well, so she went for a really early night. The kids were in bed. And I just got bored. I'm lonely, so I thought we'd see if anyone was a chat. Uh, only 10 minutes left. Oh, fair enough, Jamie. Is that Sheffield United plan? Michael Slogan's in the house. How you doing, bud? I thought you was going live tomorrow. I'm not drinking tonight. I am going live tomorrow, mate. I'm going live tomorrow, Michael. Don't worry, mate. Uh, I just got bored. My missus is not well. She went for an early night. The kids are in bed because they got school. And I'm just sitting there thinking, oh, what am I going to do with myself? I thought I'll go live for an hour or something, just to uh, just for something to do. I've not done nothing all day. So it's been one of them days where I haven't even done the school runs what I normally do, because um, I wasn't feeling very well earlier. But I'm fine now, so I didn't do the school runs. I've just been sat on my ass all day looking after me boy. <clears throat> so I thought oh, let's walk around the shop and get some beer and go live for an hour. <laughs> Why not? But I'll still definitely be live tomorrow. I think I missed it where I didn't do one last week because I was on holiday. I think I just missed having a chat with people. I'll probably play a bit of Xbox or something in a little while. I just thought I'd come for a little chat and see how people were doing. We got eleven beers in the fridge ready. Hey, not messing about, Michael. <laughs> what beers did you get, mate? Just the eleven. <laughs> yeah, I just did my beer review as well, uh, which I'll probably put up tomorrow. I just reviewed this. St. Peter's Organic Best Bitter. And it was rather nice. It's bottle conditioned as well. I love their oval bottles that they use. And all the St. Peter's beers, or owls, are um, bottle conditioned, which is really good because they're still brewing until you open them pretty much. 
and it just tastes really fresh and you get a good body. It's more like drinking it in the pub. And that was very nice. In fact, I don't think I've had a bad beer from St. Peter's. I've had some that are a bit, you know, so-so, but I've not had a bad, what I'd call a bad beer. It seems to be quite a safe brewery. And especially when you get in that bottle conditioning, you know it's got to be half decent. Oh. That's the thing with these like spur of the moment ones. Everyone's expecting me to, to go live tomorrow, which I am still going live tomorrow. But nobody's nobody knows I was going to go live tonight, so it's just randomly some people might see it pop up that I'm live enjoying, but I'm not expecting many people in. Because everybody thinks I'm going live tomorrow, <laughs> which I am, but I'm confusing myself now. No wonder you lot get confused. <laughs> so, what's everybody been up to? Uh, sub 10, dude, Pearl and Backer Hefeweizen in Lidl. £6.99 for six is my go to at the minute. That is really good value, mate. That is very good value. I have had that. But Lidl's not really that close to me. Aldi's closest. I tend to go to Aldi more. But at that price, it's probably worth me going out of the way. In fact, if I ask the missus nicely, she might drive me to Lidl tomorrow and get some for the live. Because I do fancy a vice beer. Where I've been on holiday, I've been drinking crap beer. And very weak beer. I sort of use my holiday as a bit of a detox, if you like. Because uh, the clubhouse, in the clubhouse, they wanted £6.29 for a pint of bloody Madry. A six quid for a bottle of Corona or six fifty for a pint of Guinness. And I just thought I'm not paying them prices, especially when you've got five kids of you. They all want drinks and stuff to eat and arcade money. You just can't do it. And then the missus obviously has having a drink as well. So um uh I was I was just bought a case of Corona out of Sainsbury's and I was just sneak, sneaking it in the club ass and drinking that. Why not? So I saved myself a fortune. Ten pound for twelve bottles instead of one uh, six pound for one bottle in the, in the clubhouse. I even cut myself some lime up, put in a little bag, <laughs> putting like my own lime in it, and uh, nobody noticed. No, it didn't harm anyone. It saved me money, and it gave me more money to give the kids. So everyone's a winner, aren't they? Apart from me, I suppose, because I had to drink Corona. Because if I'd have just picked up like a ger fancy German beer or something, that would have stood out because they don't sell it in there. So it had to be like Corona or Bud, pretty much, because that's the bottled beers that they sell. Um, so for me, it was Corona. Uh, sub 10 is 5.5 .5 and very good. Yeah, I have had it. I'm sure I reviewed it. I was really impressed with it. Um, obviously, it's not the best vice beer in the world, but for the price, it's very good. It's not as like good as some of the other ones, but... It's very good value for that money. You're not gonna you're not gonna find anything better for that money, are you? That's for sure. Bang for buck wise, you're not gonna beat that. Six they're five hundred mil bottles as well, are they? Six for six ninety nine. Cool, yeah, that, that is really good. Really, really good. <clears throat> if I remember rightly, it's much like the um Aldi's uh, Weinbacher Weiss beer. Pretty decent. I don't know what one's better. That could make an interesting video, actually. If I do end up going to Lidl and pick some up, I could grab one from Aldi and then do a little beer battle, maybe. It's an idea. But I get a lot of ideas, but I often forget them. That's the problem. But yeah, that could be a good one. What's the best value? Uh, Vice beer, the battle of the cheap budget supermarkets. Well, at the minute, Aldi can't come, I think it's what one pound fifty a bottle for their vice beer. So you're only going to get four bottles for your six quid, and it's not six. So it's going to have to be the little one, isn't it? Because from what I can remember, there's not much difference in them as far as quality goes. So you're just going to go for the cheaper option, aren't you? Morgan 95 good evening, mate. It's been a while. Good evening, Morgan, mate. Thanks for popping in and say hello. Uh, yeah, it has been a while. Last Friday, I didn't go live because I was on holiday. And uh, I did actually take my laptop on holiday with me, and I did plan on still going live. But I couldn't get no internet. The only time I could get internet was if I went to the clubhouse and there was, like, blaring music and all that. It just it wouldn't have worked. So I literally took my laptop away for nothing because I didn't even turn the thing on. 
But I did still have intentions of going live. But instead, I did a little vlog on my phone. I didn't take no real equipment with me or nothing, but I've done my best. Did a little holiday vlog. It's about 30 minutes long, if you've not seen it. it's uh, I think I put it up about three days ago. I really enjoyed making it. It, it was sank a little bit different. and uh, Plus, it's nice memories for the family. We can look back on it. It gave me a bit of content for the channel, but it's also it's there on YouTube. It can stay there on YouTube. It's like a home, a family home video vlog sort of thing, you know. Uh, kids can look back on it when they're older and that. Uh, Casey, are you gassy today? I, as soon as I see are you gassy today, I didn't even need to read the name. I didn't know who that was straight away. <laughs> In fact, Casey, I'm kind of the opposite of gassy. I'm wishing I was gassy because I'm feeling really uh, like I've got trap wind today. Uh, nothing would make me happier to let one rip right now because it's all sort of traveling up sort of just underneath the man area and it's oh, it just it just won't shift it just will not shift and drinking beer is definitely not helping it but you know <laughs> uh morgan i saw your park dean video oh thanks for watching it mate should get down to park dean at californium sands in norfolk i can't have a beer with you Norfolk, my dad's from Norfolk actually. To be honest with you, we got quite lucky with that holiday because we couldn't really afford to go away because we've got five children, me and the missus. And the problem is the holidays in term uh in half term oh, they're just so fucking pricey, aren't they? It's like a thousand pounds for me the missus and the kids to stay in the caravan for like five days in, in the Easter half term. But luckily I've got a really kind friend that actually let me have it for free. Uh, she's a really lovely lady that I'm made friends with on the school runs. Uh, no, I'm not shagging it. <laughs> uh, she's actually, uh, uh, I won't say an old lady, but she's a grandma and she, she's got two disabled daughters that have had kids and she's like super granny does the school runs and all that lovely lady she was like I've, I'm, she said i am and shelly you're more than welcome to stay there with a the family for f free a free holiday a half term or you can have it whenever you want it she said so we picked the easter half term but i still gave her a couple of hundred quid because at the end of the day she's got grand rent to pay uh you know we're going to be using gas and electric you know i would not want it her to be out of pocket so I gave her enough to cover the gram rent, gas, electric, and just a few extra quid. Just as like a thank you, but she was more than happy to let us have it for no nothing. That's how nice she is. And uh, we had a good time. We come back, and she's letting us have it in the summer as well, in the summer holidays for a week. Again, that would probably cost about a grand and a half in the summer holidays for me and my lot to stay there. And so I'm just going to give her again. She's agreed to just give me two hundred quid like I did this time which is really kind of her because that saves us a fortune because we can focus on like spending money. Cause the problem is with my lot, you pound the ground enough just to get there. And then you imagine how much five kids spend. They all want sweets and drinks and arcades and they want to do activities. Uh, you know, of course you want to have a takeaway when you're on a day and things like that. So it just allowed us to really save up some spending money and make the most of the holiday on the money that we saved. So yeah, what a woman. And that's why I did the vlog, actually, because um, her daughter watches the channel. And she said, can you do a beer review while you're away? Charlie would really like that. It's her daughter. And I, I said, well, I'll try. But the problem I had is I couldn't find any beers that I hadn't done. It was just like a little niece shop there. I, mean, misses, I sent me missus to the local Sainsbury's to get me some Corona. And she picked up the wrong one, the new one, the light Corona. And I was like, oh, I'm annoyed you've bought the wrong one, but I can review that. So that's why I ended up doing that as well. And then I thought I'd do a vlog for her and all. Um, Morgan, 1985, glad you're back. Watching through your health was going to keep you out of the game. You thought the health was going to keep me out of the game? Uh, my sister-in-law... It's a cleaning business, cleaning holiday shadows along the Norfolk coast. And probably get you a decent discount. That'd be great, mate. Let me know if you can. 
Stephen Bakewell. All right, pal, just joined. How you doing, Stephen, mate? Good to see you in, bud. Thanks for popping in. Those arcades are proper money pits. They are. They're addictive as well. Even I end up getting, having a little go and getting addictive. No wonder the kids are get addicted. But I don't play like all the adult ones and that. I'm just sat there pumping two peas into the machine, really wanting to win these toys that you know are worth about 10p <laughs> and getting these thousands of tickets that are just, you can't buy anything decent with, yet you still really want to win them. <laughs> it's just... It just catches you, doesn't it? And you get all these tickets, you're all happy, you cash them all in. You go over to where the prize section is, and it's like, oh, I could buy a couple of lollipops or a bouncy ball. <laughs> it's just, why do we do it? It's just one of them things, isn't it? Paramount, evening, Mr. B Monster. Evening, mate. Thanks for popping in and saying hello. I hope you're doing well, bud. But uh, yeah, but we had a good time. Um, we're hoping to go abroad sometime, but. Sometimes these uh, little uh, chalet holidays and that are good, especially if you're in a good location because you can use it as a base. And uh, where we went and uh, Romney Sands, it's right near a lot of things like um, Dimchurch, uh, Dover. Uh, the other way, you've got like Dungeness and things like that, all really close. Dungeness is like five minutes away. I'll check that out briefly. I think when I go back in the summer, I might do a review in Dungeness. Uh, there's a pub literally out in the sticks and nowhere uh bloody expensive though but i might do a beer review in the pub maybe and i might even try some fish and chips that they actually catch in dungeness and they send in the little shop there it's like if you've not been to dungeness it's like they actually think i think they actually class it as a desert the only desert in the uk it's just proper out in the sticks and it's quite creepy there's weird sort of creepy houses down there and abandoned houses, and even the ones that ain't abandoned, they're just really weird looking. It's like sank out of a horror film or something. But interesting place to visit. Um, but not really such for the kids. I mean, two year old, nothing really there for him, but I enjoyed it. Uh, if you're not, check check out C3 Holidays. They rent out chalets on behalf of people that own their own chalet on Park Bean Parks, much cheaper. Cheers, Morgan. That's a uh, because I think Helen, who uh, who Shelley we stayed in, I think she uses something like that to rent it out. Um, because she does actually rent it out to like paying customers as well. Michael Slogan, it's beer gangster o'clock, <laughs> beer gangster. Dungeness is weird, it is really weird, mate. I would have liked to have spent a bit more time there walking around and looking at all the creepy buildings and that, but. Uh, yeah, we, we had a two year old with us and it wasn't buggy friendly, and uh, he can only walk so far. I didn't even get to go in the, the lighthouse, but that's okay, it gives me a reason to go back in the summer. And uh, hopefully, the boy will be able to walk a bit more, a bit further. Then he's only two, he'll be free by the summer. So, Michael Slogan, bash. <laughs> Yeah, I um I did miss the live last week, even though I was on all that I really wanted to do it. But I just couldn't think of a way to make it happen. Other than going down in the clubhouse, and that would cause all sorts of issues. Technically, yes, I could have done it, but there would have been loud music. So you might have had trouble hearing me, and YouTube would have gone off their nut because of all the copyright claims and all that. You know, every every four or five minutes there'd be another copyright claim with another song. And it probably would have got me booted off of being YouTube. So um yeah i just couldn't do it if, unfortunately i couldn't get no internet in the uh chalet i couldn't even get no reception on my phone and when i got first got there i was like oh this is really this is really grim like, i literally can't even call anyone but then once i got used to it i actually enjoyed just having like five days away from you know i couldn't even check facebook or whatever or um the comments on youtube or, you know, when you're making videos, you do get a bit obsessed and you're answering the comments all the time and you're reading up how many people watched your videos and all that. And it was nice just to not be able to do that for a while, apart from in the evening when I went down the club at us. But then I was watching all the entertainment and that. I'd have a little look if someone was a bit crap. But um, it was nice just to have a break from the whole social media and 
just internet in general. I got used to it and ended up kind of somewhat enjoying it. But the kids, it was like they like cutting both their legs off. Kids these days cannot deal without Wi-Fi. Like I can remember before Wi-Fi existed, you know, but the, my kids can't, and they just they just couldn't deal with it. They could not deal with having no Wi-Fi. Um, <laughs> me, <laughs> my daughter, she obviously doesn't know how um, internet works and all that. She went, Dad. When we go back in the summer, can we take the Wi-Fi box, please? <laughs> I said it don't work like that. That's me. Oh, I can't. I can't just plug it in wherever and it works. <laughs> Bless her. Um, I'm looking forward to Star Prime and Unfiltered. Mostly tomorrow. Ah, uh, as the finally got it in. That's a nice beer, mate. Uh, and a mix of beers. On your owl videos, you're in stag. On your owl videos, you reviewed Stag. I did review Stag, yeah. And tonight I've done that one. Obviously, I've not posted it yet because I've got to make a thumbnail for it and upload it probably tomorrow. That was nice. Organic, best bitter. Bottle conditioned. Uh, I've got a few hours to do, actually. We're just annoyed our neighbourhood making a tennis net out of Nets across the road. Well, got that in the fridge. What's going on, Stephen? How you doing, mate? I love a good owl beer. Yeah, me too, mate. I don't put them in the fridge, though. I tell you, you're, you're doing the beer a disservice. I'm putting it in the fridge. Stick it. If I were you, mate. Stick it in like maybe a shed or under your kitchen if you've got like kitchen sink if you've got like a cupboard down there with a bit of room. Like you want it cool but not cold, and you pick up so much more of the flavour. Um, and it's just it's night and day. Uh, all hours and stouts as well. Don't put a stout in the fridge unless perhaps you could do it with a Guinness because you're not really going to get much flavour from that. Really, it's just there to be smashed in it. But any beer, decent beer, like a nice owl, don't put it in the fridge. You don't want it, you don't want it like two degrees or whatever. You want it more like 10 or something. You'll be surprised if you sort of, if I've done like a beer review of an owl that I've got out of the fridge. And I could drink the same owl that was like room temperature, so to speak. Or, you know, maybe a bit cooler than that. But I'd pick up so much more flavours from the one like served at the right temperature. Next is like Lego. This was in 1998. How are they making a tennis net out of it? Uh, Stephen is saying about the uh, the football last night, and it mate didn't go our way. It's been a bad week for an Arsenal fan. <laughs> uh, I don't let it bother me as much as I used to. I used to be like, well into it, uh, a bit obsessed. I've got a bit obsessed with football, like. I knew all the players, I knew how old they were, I knew how tall they were, I knew all the previous clubs that they'd played for and how many goals. I was a bit of like a, a, a obsessed with the stats. And I'd play things like Football Manager and all that on the PC. And I'd be studying, constantly studying all the players and all that. And uh, I'd get upset in that like, if Arsenal lost games and stuff and... Began, began to start happening a lot towards the end of Arsenal Wingers' reign. And I cancelled the Sky TV and I stopped watching it. I'll just I'll watch the highlights now, but I'm a lot more chilled with it. I still want Arsenal to win, but it ain't going to ruin my day if they don't, you know. I shed full of shit and all covered to four as well. I get the two hours I've got in, in the fridge. I'll take them out. Now, before I start drinking, yeah, you could do that. 
I mean, if it's a blonde owl, some people do prefer them refrigerated. I still personally don't. Uh, I don't refrigerate them. But I've got a little beer cupboard in the kitchen. <laughs> I stick all the uh, beers. In the, it's quite, it stays quite cool even in the summer in that cupboard. And I put all my owls in there, and I've put all my lagers and that in the fridge. But I've not got a great deal of stock at the minute. As far as my stock, I mean, like beers that are there to review, and I keep sort of breaking into. I keep drinking beers that I'm meant to review. Like it gets to the end of the night, and I've like picked up some beers. To have that evening, I'm like, oh, I fancy one more. And it's hard knowing you've got all them good beers in the kitchen. <laughs> the amount of times I've sort of drunk beers that I'm supposed to review and then end up forgetting to replace them because you think you've reviewed it because you remember buying it, but then you don't remember the fact that you drunk it, not reviewed it. And the more and more reviews I do, the more confusing it gets. I'm just waiting for the day when I review a beer and I don't realize that I've already reviewed it before. Because it's getting so confusing now. <laughs> yeah, fire stick with Cody. Yeah, I um I've got Cody on my Xbox, mate. High pineapple head. Oh <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I I I've you can put Cody on an Xbox One or Series X or S. And uh yeah, I watch it on that. But not so much anymore. I've, I think if there's a massive boxing fight on, I feel like I really have to watch that. If it's like a Joshua or Tyson Fury, especially heavyweights, then I'll load the Cody up for that. But with the football, like they tend to play on the weekend and I normally doing something with the kids and stuff like that. So I just end up missing it all. I think that's part of it was. I mean, not being so obsessed with football now is the kids, you know. Although my boy Callum is starting to get right into football. He's an Arsenal fan as well. He's always playing FIFA. I play a lot of FIFA. That's the funny thing. I don't watch that much football. I just like battering people at FIFA. Try doing nearly 10,000 reviews like Simon and trying to remember what beers you've had in the past. Yeah, I know. That's got to be crazy. I don't know if he's done 10,000 reviews. He's done 10,000 videos, but he's done a lot of like, he's probably got a couple of thousand videos of just him going, don't forget, I'm going live on Friday night or things like that. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it's like my channel will say something like, I think it's coming up 800 videos, but actual beer reviews, you, the way you find out is go to the beer reviews playlist and it might be something like five or 600 reviews. Then there'll be like some cider reviews that will be in a, a separate playlist. And then like a few family like vlogs and that, like I did the other day. What's your no local non-league team? Uh, I suppose it'd be Chatham. Chatham Town FC. Um, my local team is Gillingham, but obviously they're not non-league. It's fun to go to. I've been to a few Gillingham games. And uh, they were... I've took all the kids to meet all the players and all that. Your kids have got pictures with them of all the Chindon players and that. And they got signed posters and all that, all that sort of stuff. Because um, my boy well, I used to play for a football team and uh, they had like, they went to a match as well when they met the players and stuff. He said on his live earlier, He said what on his live earlier? What, they've done 10,000 reviews? He probably has done close to it. But what I'm saying is he's done 10,000 videos. But a lot of his videos could be shorts of like, just saying, oh, yeah, I'm live. I'm live on Friday or, you know, 
he's even done some DIY videos and he's done a video washing his car with a bottle of Budweiser. <laughs> They're not really reviews, are they? But he's done like a hundred, uh, 10,000 pieces of content. Hey fella, how are you doing? Hello Jack. Uh, I'm doing good, mate. I'm trying to stay positive. I've got still got some health problems going on, but I'm just trying not to worry about them so much. Um, I think with the anxiety with me, I sometimes, I think, perhaps make more of a things than what they really are. I don't know, because when you've got anxiety, you keep overthinking everything, and sometimes you can make a meal out of saying it's not as bad as what it is. Uh, but I'm trying to stay positive. Oh, he's done 908 videos. Jesus. He was at Dartford when young. Yeah. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, health-wise. Yesterday, I uh, I had my asthma test. I went to the uh, like breathing clinic, and they tested me, hooked me up to a machine and all that. And I had to do all different breathing exercises because um, I was supposed to have that done a couple of months ago. But because I was very ill a few months ago, they gave me a really high maximum dose of steroids to open up my airways when I was struggling to breathe. They couldn't do the asthma test while I had the steroids in my system, and it took six weeks for them to wear off because obviously I could do the asthma test and breathe fine because my body's pumped full of steroids. So they needed them to wear off before they'd done the test, and that was yesterday. Um uh, I've done the test, Lo just loads of different breathing exercises, like breathing in as much as you can and then blowing as hard as you can into this thing. There's one blowing slow into it, uh, just measuring how much air your lungs can hold and lung capacity and all that sort of stuff. You do all these tests and then you take a couple of goes of an asthma pump. You do the same tests and you see whether they improve the results. If you like, because then that shows you that the asthma pump it benefits you. And uh, taking the asthma pump gave me an extra 300 milliliters of air in my lungs. So the lady's given me a steroid, um, a steroid asthma pump, which I've got to pick up on Friday or tomorrow, either tomorrow or Saturday. And I've got to take it twice a day. Apparently, I've got to take it twice a day, morning. And in the evening, and after I've taken it, I've got to rinse my mouth out of water. Something to do with the steroids. I don't fully understand why, but she said it will cause some problems if you don't, like dry mouth and headaches or something. My conditions like that too. Overthink things. Yeah, this, this is what's so difficult. Like when I made that video to do with the anxiety and the using alcohol and stuff like that. When you have a few beers, you tend not to worry so much. And if I go lay in bed, stunk all sober and try and sleep, because I have problems sleeping because of the insomnia, I start overthinking everything. It's like, hmm, what can I worry about? <laughs> you know? Uh, or rinse with beer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that could work. No, I won't do that because she said, rinse it with water and then spit it out. I don't want to be spitting beer out. Unless it's a shit beer, like Carlin, or something. <laughs> Don't fully understand why that is, but she was like, trust me, you want to rinse your mouth out after the steroids. I'm sure she said something to do with headaches and dry mouth and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm going to be on the steroids pumps until it runs out, and then she's going to see me again. And ask what difference it made to my life. Did it improve? Did it improve my breathing and stuff like that? And if it did, then I'm going to be on it for the rest of my life, basically. And if it didn't, then I'll carry on doing more tests and find out why I have problems breathing. So that's the one thing that's out of the way now that I've done yesterday. And the second one is a lot more worrying for me, especially in my anxiety. And it's just not a nice thing to have done. What's going on, lady, mate? Good to see you, mate. Bash. Yeah, the, the second one is a lot more worrying. I've got to have an operation. Um, 
Well, it's classed as an operation, but I don't know if you really call it an operation. <laughs> but basically, I've got to have a camera up my arsehole. And um, I was talking to Simo last night, because Simo needs to have it done as well. Um, but he's been holding it off because he's been very worried about it. And I was also talking to Vape My, Vape My Beer. Uh, he's just joined the channel as I said that. How weird is that? He just joined the live. I've said it. I was talking to Rate My Beer and Simo on Rate My Beer's live last night. And Paul from Rate My Beer has had it done and he said it's fucking brutal. And he's literally scared the life out of me. And I wish I never asked him what it was like because he was like, I'm holding on to these rails bent over and they're shoving up my ass. I'm like, is it nearly done yet? Is it nearly done yet? He's going. And then they started going around corners. <laughs> I was like, oh, fucking hell. And then he was telling me like that he's still scarred him and he's never been the same person since. And they give you these drinks before the operation to clear you out and you're pissing water and all that. And I thought, God, why did I ask you? Because I wasn't too worried until I spoke to him. I was like, fuck me. And there's Simo who's been holding it off, listening to Paul tell us about his experiences with the old camera as well. And uh, God, I think he's fighting the life out of both of us. How you doing, Paul, anyway? Who you got in Europe? <laughs> well, we, at least we had someone in Europe. <laughs> Michael Slocum, talking can. Sub 10, with weed and beer, I sleep 10 hours a day. Oh, I wish I could, mate. I'm lucky if I sleep 10 hours in about four days. I'm very bad with sleep. Very, very bad. Terrible, actually. <laughs> Um, and all of a sudden, after months of like sleeping like about two hours a night, I'll just like crash out for a whole day of like sheer exhaustion. You're sending DMs. <laughs> uh, Stephen White, first three feet is the worst bit. Oh, god, don't first three feet is the worst bit. Are we coming out me bloody ear roll? You feel sorry for you, Adam, now? Oh, don't, Michael. I mean, it's actually worth... I thought it was fucking hilarious, actually. Even though it scared the shit out of me, Paul describing having that camera up his ass last night, I think it's about three or four hours into his live, was absolute comedy gold. It really was. It scared the shit out of me, but it was so fucking funny hearing him talking about it. I was absolutely shitting myself, but laughing at the same time. It was a very weird um, emotions to be going through. It's like, how can I find something so funny that at the same time is scaring the life out of me? And then you had Simo, because I wasn't actually on the live, but I was watching Paul and Simo talk to each other. And um, you had Simo on camera with Paul, and you could see the fear in his eyes while listening to Paul describe having this done and uh yeah he's proper like i've never been the same since it's given me nightmares and described how he walked out of the fucking hospital like a penguin and everyone was looking at him like what has that poor guy just had done <laughs> but at the end of the day it's got to be done the reason they are shoving the camera up my ass is because I'm not worried about it, which is really surprising for me with my anxiety. But they they said the potential bowel cancer. They're saying I'm not to say we're not saying you've got bowel cancer, but you are have some symptoms of bowel cancer. So they just want to check, like you know, it might be like a five percent chance or something like that. But it's better to be safe in it. And uh, the main reason is I shit about six or seven times a day. Um, yeah, so I have a lot of problems in that area, so they just want to have a little look, but it don't sound fun. As soon as you no, know, I was sort of okay when he was explaining it, he was like, Yeah, you like bend over, they put the camera in, and he said, Like, I felt like I wanted to cry, and I was telling them to stop. And then he said, And then they start going around corners, and he said, He felt completely violated. <laughs> he said it was like getting raped, and then this cracked me up. Uh, Paul said to the nurses, <laughs> he said to me, I know I'm a, I'm a George Michael fan, but this is taking the piss. <laughs> oh, I was fucking in stitches. 
Oh, I'm a George Michael fan. Oh, just fucking picturing it. Just like, don't get me wrong. I felt sorry for him that he's been through that, but just the way he told the story just made it hilarious. Uh, Colin is around sixty-five inches, or just over five feet. Oh, mate, don't say that. So you're not joking when you said about going in from the first three feet is the worst. I was hoping he was joking. <laughs> God, my mate said the camera is as big as brutal dildo. Ed, what a brutal dildo! Oh Jesus Christ! It's gonna be like having one of those old, those old VHS camcorders, you know, the massive ones you used to put on your shoulders. Bend over, mate. <laughs> no, no joke. Fucking again, three foot into my ass. Free foot into my arse. I think I've got to stop asking these questions, you know. And round corners. Up, uh, that brings a whole, whole new saying to what was it people used to say when I was a kid. Up your ass and round the corner. That's the way to California or saying. Fucking hell, now I'm literally getting, get, they're going to go up their ass and round the corner for real. The doctor came out the back of the curtain. Zipping up his flyer sauce. <laughs> 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 Fucking hell. I have had saying, well, I, it's not similar, but it's similar as in it's in the same area. But where our problems down below, this was about four years ago. I had to have my prostate examined for prostate cancer, which basically means you get fingered by a doctor and they were like around the corner, feeling around and that for lumps. And I've gone in there and I was hoping it was going to be like some really petite little lady or something. And it was this giant geezer with some of the biggest hands I've ever seen. Geezer must have been about six foot five. He's like, Pits on the glove, and you're like, fucking size of his hands to bend over. Oh, fuck so. so that might have broke me in a bit. <laughs> God's the going in you, bosh. First three is worse. You pass out then. Right up the bosh. <laughs> Oh, don't. I might actually ask to be sedated. I've had that ad. I had a phone, the Samaritans, an hour later, fuck's sake. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Was that the prostate exam? It weren't that bad at first, the prostate exam. I mean, again, it's one of the things I had to have it done just to be safe. But what Paul said last night, because he sort of went in with his finger, and I thought, no, it's not that bad. And then he started sort of going around the corner a bit, you know what I mean? That's when it got a bit messy. <laughs> so I would say, that's so fucking demoralising. Is it demoralising? Is that the word for it? Not demoralising, like, talk about take your dignity away. But like Paul said, they put you in this little robe, which you look ridiculous in, and there's a hole where your arsehole is. I mean, that is, talk about, they could surely do it in a more dignified way and put you in a robe with a hole where the arse is. They could just make you pull down your trousers, do you know what I mean? I mean, they've got special robes for you to be raped. I mean, oh, come on. How did years back, worst part was waiting for the photos of the boots. <laughs> yeah, some... Kinky guys like a finger up the bum from the missus mind. <laughs> yeah, it's a thing, isn't it? Because of prostate, isn't it? Basically, you've got a fucking G-spot up your ass. But um, I don't think Paul's going to be wanting to explore that after what he's seen him Sounds like 50 seat of grey, 50 shades of grey, 50 shades of brown, mate, fucking up my ass. (laughs) 
So yeah, I'm dreading that. I'm not a liar. Uh, I've also got to tell Simo how it goes. Should I lie? If it's bad, should I lie? I don't know. Because obviously I want him to have it done for his own good, do you know what I mean? Because he's been putting it off for a while. Uh, Mohammed Uwas Khan. Uh, how you doing, mate? Good to see you. Hope you're doing well, mate. Thanks for joining live. I'm not sure. Uh, are you a subscriber to the channel, mate? Or just randomly stumbled across it? I just don't recognise your name. Uh, Stephen White, just tell him, go straight up, love. <laughs> Straight up there. I think Paul should have lied. I think he should have gone, yeah, it's no problem. Maybe he was just trying to scare the shit out of us. <laughs> My mate said the worst thing was a drink. They forced you to drink. Oh, don't. Paul was going on about that as well. Apparently there's like three different drinks or something. And one of them's like really thick. And basically you drink these drinks to completely clear yourself out. And they say, you know when you clear that because you're literally pissing through your arsehole. So Paul said he has these drinks. He said they were the most disgusting drinks he's ever drunk in his life. But he forced them down to clear himself out. And then he got to the hospital to have it done. And they had a little look. They went in and they went, you're not clear that properly. Pulled the thing out again and made him have another drink. So he, he got done twice, so to speak. So you enjoyed it, Daddy. <laughs> what was it like? Tim was going to be like, what, what was it like, Ed? <laughs> I fucking loved it, mate. <laughs> you fucking liar. <laughs> Do you want me to show you how it feels? I oh, don't. <laughs> Paul thought he was having a Cronenberg Blanc. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, this is why I came on for a bit. I was bored and now I'm laughing and I just love chatting to you guys. Oh, you do. It's my favourite thing about doing YouTube, actually, is, is the lives. And it took me over a year to about a year and a half before I made my first live because the thought of it scared the crap out of me because with the anxiety in that it was kind of a big thing i always said to myself i don't think i'll ever go live i don't think i'll ever be able to go live but i think doing the channel for a while and trying to get into know you all in the comments and that made it a bit easier so i thought well most people that join the live are probably just going to be people that i chat to in the comments on a lot of the videos anyway paul thought he was having, oh, I'm laughing with you, mate. You in the chat are cracking me up. <laughs> Same here. I mean, I, I'm laughing, but I'm shitting myself inside, like I say. It's a weird kind of emotion. Like, that fear, but you're laughing. It's a, kind of a bit of a nervous laugh, I think. <laughs> oh, don't. It's the way Paul was saying, I've, I've never been the same man since. Oh, God. I like making you happy, man. <laughs> Cheers, Michael. Uh, David Dorrell, evening. Tuned in just to find <laughs> you lot talking about visiting the bum doctor. <laughs> yeah, what have I joined here? Yeah, welcome to the chat, mate. Um, have you got any anal stories you'd like to share with us? <laughs> Excuse <coughs> <coughs> me. I've just got to go and check my phone because it's going off like a madman. I think it's a miss. It's probably telling me to shut up.
Oh. Oh, baby woke up screaming. Now it is me that woke him up. But I need to be a bit more quiet. Let me see what Paul sent me. Oh. Fucking <laughs> Robin Williams. <coughs> oh, I think I'm going to need to crack open another beer. Nothing too fancy tonight. This is a Dutch, Dutch brew Heineken. I don't sell much in my uh, local shop. It's one of them little Tesco Express things. Because we're talking about something that ain't bum holes. Um, in all seriousness, mate, you'll be fine. Just a bit of pain. We'll be better for it. We'll discuss beer and ass on this channel. <laughs> yeah. Bum hole pain. Oh, don't. Paul sent a picture of his bum hole after the camera went up. Yes. He sent me a picture of his gape. <laughs> Look what it done, mate. Got an arsehole like a collapsed mine shaft. <laughs> oh, Jesus. God help me. Oh, well, it's got to be done, isn't it? <laughs> Get some of this beer down here. I wonder what beer will be my first beer after having that done. Something strong and not brown. <laughs> it won't be a stout. It won't be an imperial stout. When you're having it, Ad, well, they called me yesterday and they was asking me some questions about my lifestyle and that. Um. And they said that uh, we'll call you up in the next two weeks to give you a date. But they put it down as an emergency. Normally, you could have to wait a year or something. Because there's a slight chance it could be cancer. They put it down as an emergency operation. So probably won't be too long. I'm working within the next month. Um, my arsehole virginity will be well and truly three foot taken and up around the corners uh david doro i had a collapse is that's what it called a colon colonoscopy with a asterisk and watch the tv of the camera up my ass <laughs> bit uncomfortable when he got up to the spleen and the pocket pocket there oh just in case of farmer giles Jesus, mate. You can actually watch it as well. <laughs> this is her um, footage with just entering your ass. <laughs> as you can see, that's a big lump of shit on the left. Um, <laughs> but why, but why is ass <laughs> for to <a> drink? <sighs> like a train entering the tunnel, lol. <laughs> the honks to give you warning. <laughs> Stephen White, yeah, you can watch the video as they go up. Like I say, although I've recently had the camera down the uh, the other holes, <laughs> the happy nose and down my throat and that. Uh, I was watching that on the screen, actually. He was like, as you can see, you've got very, very narrow airwaves and all that. And I'm like, okay. But that was weird because I didn't get time to even worry about that. Um, I just got told to go to the hospital. I need to have a test done. Got in the room. Guys pulled out this camera. I've gone, right, this can up your nose, mate. I was like, hey, <laughs> going in. And uh, so I didn't get time to worry about it. And honestly, that one was minor. It didn't hurt. Um, didn't bother me at all. And it was done in two minutes. 
And Paul said this is like an hour of being rammed, this camera at the other end. If it was just like two minutes, you could be like, oh, it's only going to be two minutes. How bad can it possibly be? But just an hour of being full on penetrated. <laughs> Do you get do you get a copy of the DVD? No way. <laughs> no, thankfully. <laughs> Sub ten. Sorry, I would refuse to have that procedure. That's just me. Oh, don't. It's like part of me thinks should I have it done. It's like I don't know, but then say you didn't have it done, and then. You did have the big C, and you could have survived it if you'd have just had it done. You'd be gutted, wouldn't you? Simo's in the house. How are you doing, Simo? We've just been talking about you. <laughs> and uh, the events on Paul's Live last night, and how he explained, because Simo needs to have it done as well, as I said, how he was explaining um, when he had it done. <laughs> Fucking hilarious. But scary at the same time. <laughs> Fucking put me right off it. Not that I was ever excited about it. I wasn't too worried until I spoke to him last night. But that was that was so funny when he was describing it. <laughs> when he said I love Joel Bernard, all this is taking the piss. And he's scanning about bending over and holding these rails. And just to look on your face, I could see you like oh, fucking hell. <laughs> and I was feeling exactly the same, even though I wasn't on camera. Your face was exactly the same as my face <laughs> off of camera, trust me. <laughs> PJT is very dramatic though, yeah. <laughs> I think it's just that there's a man in that area, so. Yeah, that don't sound fun at all, Simo. <laughs> yeah. Probably not fun. Andreas FA. How you doing, mate? Thanks for tuning into the live stream. Hope you're doing good, Andreas. If I end up having it done before you, Simo, do you want me to be honest with you? <laughs> or do you want me to tell you it was all right? <laughs> yes, Simo, mate. I think I'm, I'm going to be done, quite literally, <laughs> within a month because they called yesterday and they said they're going to call me within the next two weeks for an emergency appointment. Being an emergency appointment, you'd think they're going to call me within two weeks and then I'll probably have to wait maybe another two weeks. They've been chasing me. <laughs> Simo, <laughs> come out, come out. I've got to go three foot inside your arsehole around the corner. Come to daddy. Simo sucks. I still can't get over that Bernard Silver penalty. What was he thinking? I haven't watched the um, highlights of the games yesterday, actually. Apparently, the stuff they made you up before was the worst. Somebody said that. They had it done in chat a minute ago, Simo. Dude, that was really bad. Narcos in the house. How are you doing, bud? Thanks for uh, joining the live, mate. Well, it's nice chat to my friend. Um, I reckon they enjoy it, mate. Stephen White, another year trophyless. Steve, Simo City Wern. Ali D, apparently our own fans were being dickheads and trying to keep the ball. Yeah, it was a bit pretty bad night for um, English football last night, wasn't it? See, you weren't up to it, pal. It's a weird one, isn't it? I, um, I, I mean, I thought, if I'm honest, I thought City and Arsenal had a really good chance of. But, you know, eventually meeting each other. Because, obviously, the last few years, English clubs have sort of dominated, didn't they? Or City. Well, then Chelsea won it as well, didn't they? So. I 
colonoscopy, a colonoscopy is a bit of a pain in the ass. <laughs> oh, I can believe it, mate. After Paul's description, three years ago, I had two discs taken out of my neck and a fusion done. That was far worse. Yeah, I can imagine there's a lot worse things you could have done. Oh, don't know. Camera up the ass. Because if it's anything like the one I had up my nose, you're talking a tiny camera. I know I was joking earlier about somebody shoving one of them old VCR cameras on it. But in reality, it's probably like a wire with a tiny little camera on it. I don't know. I'm expecting maybe the size of a five pence or something like that. I can take it. Give it to me. <laughs> Michael Slogan. But, man, that's the way the cookie crumbles, isn't it? Only Villa went through, though. They are flying the flag for England and Europe. Yeah, they done Arsenal as well, didn't they? So, oh, oh no, Emery. That's not a good evening. We have too many players in the squad. <laughs> he cracked me up with his Arsenal manager. I think we treated him so badly, Unai Emery. I think we treated him disgustingly. A great manager. He just needed a bit of time, didn't he? I know he messed up that season when we lost the top four. But he, he needed more time, man. But the players were even taking the piss out of him, weren't they? Uh... I mean, look what he's done for Villa, though. If he can do that for Villa, what could he have he'd done with Arsenal? Pretty sure he would. He, he could have got us uh, just as well done, got us playing as well as Arteta has. If he was given enough time as Arteta has been given. I don't see a top of the Premier League at the moment. My favourite team, Liverpool, are third. I think City are going to win it. <clears throat> David, they were through the front round and the vocal cords, and I lost my voice for six weeks. Jesus. If anyone tells me I have a brass neck, I correct them and say, of a titanium neck. There are four screws in there. Jesus. God, that must be horrible. You couldn't talk for six weeks. God, that's got to, that's got to be lonely, that is. Can't even talk to, like, your loved ones and that. I suppose you could write it down, couldn't you? With technology these days, I mean, it would have been worse, like, 20, 30 years ago, wouldn't it? You've got tablets and all that now, and you? And you can probably get an apple pen or whatever piss off you wanker <laughs> make me a cup of tea woman <laughs> Tottenham a shit one bad game ain't bad AD says my old man lost a toe crushing his feet in a tractor Picked up a hitch. He was lucky he only lost one toe, to be honest. Jesus. <laughs> I think it was just his, his uh, voice, wasn't it, Stephen? It was always, uh, uh, first of all, good evening. <laughs> Didn't even matter what time of day it was. First of all, good evening. Guaranteed at the start of every interview. You can imagine him like uh, in the dressing room to the guys. First of all, good evening. You're playing shit. <laughs> Maybe uh, Narco94 says, got an infection where I had an abscess removed. <sighs> yeah, my um, girlfriend's mum's other half had an abscess removed. Defo had his tactically astute repouche. Double over that fraud Arteta and beat him in Europe. Yeah, because, of course, they beat us in uh, UEFA, didn't they, as well? 
it might sound like a twat, but if you actually listen to the guy, it seems like good things happen, doesn't it? Michael Sokum. Why do you read a bit of my comments and read someone else's comment? Did I? Oh, sorry, mate. <laughs> what comment was that? Oh, I think maybe I thought you was talking to uh, somebody else and not me. Because sometimes like people chat amongst each other in the comments. I start reading it and I'm like, oh, he's, he's not talking. He's not like talking to me. He's answering someone else's question, if you know what I mean. It gets a bit confusing. <laughs> uh, I did defo add his tech. Oh, read that one. Uh, Apple pen, same job, a pen and paper could do it. Add, yeah. That is true. Good evening. I'll tell you, I must die. Is there too? No one has Lego hair like that naturally. <laughs> he's he's got to be in his forties now, isn't he? I mean, with hair that dark, surely, like even if you had one grey hair, it'd stick out like a sore thumb. So maybe he does dye it. <sighs> he has got a proper Lego head, though, anyway. <laughs> Sub 10, I've got root canal treatment and wisdom tooth extraction. Should be fun. Oh, Jesus. Don't, I've got a massive phobia of the dentist, mate. Massive. I don't know why. Well, I, 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 I haven't been to the dentist since I was 13. Um, The last time I went, they said I had to have loads of teeth out or whatever. I don't know what it is. It's not the pain as such. It's just, I just don't like having weird people in my mouth. That sounds a bit wrong, doesn't it? <laughs> no, I just, there's just something about that when they get that little thing out and they don't hurt enough, they start scratching at the teeth. Like, oh, it just cringes me out. I just hate the dentist and I will not go to the dentist. I will not. I've ripped my own teeth out before. I've got terrible teeth um, from not going to the dentist, obviously. Uh, really bad teeth, but I mean, perhaps one day if I was in enough pain and they knock me out, I might go. I've even thought about just going there and just saying, Look, just knock me out and do what you got to do because you've got like in 30 years of work to catch up with. <laughs> just do what you got to do. Uh, for just the thought of it, I don't know what it is. Uh, I'll, I'll be more worried about having a tooth out than a camera up the bum. It's just like a weird phobia. I just I don't know what it is. Like I say what well, I do. It's just I had been before when I was younger, and it just I just hated it. I just don't. Know. It's it's just strange. Just just having someone feeling about in my mouth. It just proper cringes me out for some reason. I think if I knew the person, perhaps it wouldn't be as bad. I almost went to the dentist about fifteen years ago. Because my brother's ex-bird was a dental nurse, and she was like, I'll oh, come in with me, it'll be all right, and all that. I still didn't. <laughs> but that's the closest I've come. Uh, I think Arteta's hair is black nylon with lots of grease. Steve, burn silver, we want a double treble. Great penalty. DS, what's, that, what's that, up, Adam? All the kiddos in bed? What's up, DS? Yeah, I mean, I'm going live tomorrow. Um, the missus is not feeling well. I think she's come down with a bit of a flu. So she went to bed really early, like 8 o'clock. And um, kids went to bed early because they got school. And I was just bored. And I thought, I'll still go live tomorrow, but I thought I'd pop on for a little while tonight. So I was just bored, didn't know what to do myself. And we haven't done a live for about two weeks. I think I just needed to have a chat. And I, I couldn't wait till tomorrow. I thought so I'd do a quick one tonight as well. Bit of a warm up. Mark and I for who loves the dentist? Yeah, I know it's my kids all go. They're not bothered about oh, I don't I've not really told them about my fear of the dentist because I didn't want it to sort of rub off on them. But Mrs. don't like the dentist either, but she's got perfect teeth. So that's weird. She actually remembers the brush them every day, I think, unlike me. Um 
she's got the most perfect teeth, but she hasn't been dented since she was a kid either. So she's definitely got no problems with her, her teeth. And the kids, they all go dentists. Don't bother them. But they, they've got very good teeth as well. So there's only one of my kids who's ever had to have anything done. And that's Tyler because he eats too many sweets. He keeps needing fillings. <laughs> You have weird people in your ass in a few months, Ad. <laughs> You've got to be pretty weird to be a dentist, looking at people's filthy gobs all day, <laughs> no chance. Especially if they've got proper bad teeth. My teeth are all like... It's me. When I, last I went to dentist when I was 13, I had a tooth there, and... Uh, a baby teeth. I had a problem with my baby teeth not falling out. There was like five of them, and they never came out. And the dentist said, "If we don't take them teeth out, your teeth are going to grow bent. The one, like the adult teeth, are going to grow through bent because when they're supposed to grow through and knock them out, but mine were growing through, but not knocking out the baby tooth. And uh, eventually, they came out. But look what I'm left with now. That like, yeah." It's literally grown behind my jaw. And I've got two of the five teeth I was supposed to have out. I've grown back proper wonky and bent. Uh, the adult teeth come from proper wonky and bent. The other ones I got away with. And when the baby teeth come out, it just sort of went straight eventually on its own. And why am I talking about my teeth? Bum hole to teeth. What next? What, what other hole can we talk about? <laughs> Talk about a Jap sign next. We're not allowed to say that these days, actually. Oh, yeah. Everything's racist. Um, weird people in the mouth sounds like something to do with proclivities of Tory MPs. A bit posh me, that word, mate. I ain't got a clue what it means, <laughs> if I'm honest. Thanks, DS. Hopefully she does. She, um, yeah, she's just come down feeling a bit rough. I was a bit crap this morning. I've had this trap wind today. It's been peeing me off. But, um, yeah, she's just feeling weak and that. See, terrible pain. Phoned up. Appointment, 17th of May. Can't wait that long. Goodbye. We phoned back. Uh, something dentist. Can't say that. Come in. Well, can you? Of course you can say it. You never know these days, didn't you? Pakistani dentist. Of course you can say it. It's just the dentist from Pakistan, isn't it? Uh, came in. And I can see you 60. And I'll go in. Okay, you can save the tooth. £1,250 to save the tooth. That is insane. Or to remove the pain, remove the tooth, 250 Sub, one of your messages got removed. I don't know why. It weren't me. It was YouTube. Uh, everything's racist. Yeah, sounds about right. I don't know. You just, especially with like the way YouTube's been lately. I'm not going to say the word. In fact, I think I've already said it on this stream. So the stream's definitely going to get demonetized. I know I've said it. But just in case it ain't, the beer I reviewed the other day whilst on holiday that shares the same name with a certain thing that went around a few years ago, that review got demonetized because of, obviously, I said what the name of the beer is called, and that's a big no-no. You're not allowed to talk about that on YouTube, that subject. And because the beer was called that, they demonetized that video, so I don't make no money from it. I think... <laughs> Stupid. The problem is you appeal it, which I did, and then three days later, they realised they messed up and they put the monetization back on that video. But by then, they'd already had like 300 views. And then it slowed down. You don't get no more views after that, really. So they messed up and then you don't make nothing from it. You don't get no compensation or anything. Oh, we're sorry, we're messed up. We'll give you a couple of quid anyway. Just like I literally done nothing wrong. I just said the name of the beer because, it, you know, because of what the beer is called. They just automatically 
it's like they've got a computer in the background that picks up certain words, and if they hear one of them words, automatically shut you out. Absolutely ridiculous. Because especially that word, they really need to change that rule because not only is it the name of other things, like that beer, it's also a very popular surname in, I think, Mexico or Colombia. Very common surname. There's even footballers with that name. So, absolutely stupid. Did you hear about a fish in South America that swims up the <laughs> tap side? <laughs> Fucking evil. Oh, no, he ain't, mate, but that sounds... It's making, it's making me Jap's eye sort of tingle a bit, just thinking about it. Oh, it could... I mean, there's me worrying about having a camera up me bum. That's a whole new level, isn't it? Imagine having that have a camera up there. Oh, that would be... Oh, I suppose that's one way of looking at it, isn't it? Because I'm pretty sure there's people that do have to. God... Duck, that must be. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be. Um, what do you call? Sedated for that. I want. I want to be out cold. <laughs> I want to be out cold. <laughs> Got some three hundred fifty cans of Heineken and two bottles of Sahi in the fridge. Why not? You know it makes sense, Narco. I've got the. Um, I'm drinking the. The little cans of Heineken as well. In case you don't know people, you may have seen my video about it. But um, if you buy the little cans of Heineken, they're brewed in the Netherlands. And uh, they're far better than the... Uh, if you buy the big bottles or the 440 mil cans, they're brewed in the UK and they're, they're not great. But the uh, actually says on... If you don't believe me, it actually says on the can, uh, brewed in the Netherlands... Then you're gonna pick it up. Probably not. Heineken, brewed in the Netherlands, imported by Heineken. All right. So it's the Dutch brewed Heineken. If you buy the four forty mil cans or the big sixty six fifty mil bottles, I think they are. And you read the back of it. It says brewed in the Netherlands or the UK. They're always brewed in the UK. They just write Netherlands or the UK because they do do a version. This one that's brewed in the Netherlands. They're allowed to write that. But to put them up against each other, I noticed that some people say they can't, fair enough. You know, but it's night and day to me. That's the word, Mimic. All of a sudden, time is no problem. 2.50. How you doing, Mimic, anyway, mate? Good to have you in, bud. Um, truth removed, no problem. Hey, they seriously, Jesus, YouTube is ridiculous. Do I block anyone going against the agendas? Yeah. With that, like, you can't even say the word. You, you, even if you say something positive about it, or you can, if you say that word, your video is gone as far as any earning potential. Just say the word, gone. Other things you can talk about, but you can't talk negatively about them, uh, particularly wars and stuff like that going on in the world. You cannot say that you uh, disagree with it um, or agree with it or have an opinion on it. Um, it's, But yeah, the news channels, I don't know. The, the worst thing about it for me which is stupid, is when they do demonetize a video, they just tell you that the video has been demonetized because it breaches YouTube rules. They expect you to read the three and a half million pages or whatever it is of tiny writing that, that goes through every single rule to figure out yourself what you've done wrong. They don't say, oh, we've demonetized your video, mate, because you said the N-word or, or whatever. And then you're like, oh, I know in future not to say that word because that got my video. You have to guess. Yeah. You know, they don't tell you why they're just, their little computer spots something you didn't like and bans it. And then you have to request for a human to watch your video back uh, and spot the mistake that the computer has made, which is what they did with that particular review. But guaranteed if I said that word, which I think I've already said it earlier, I'm sure I said it earlier. 
I can check if this video has been demonetized. I bet it has, because I'm sure I said it earlier. Um, let me have a look. Yeah, it's been demonetized anyway. So, sod it. Corona. That's the word, because I've already demonetized it, which means I won't get and pay for this video. Don't give a shit, really. To be honest with you. Um, no, do it, for, do it for the fun of it. But yeah, you can't say the word Corona. Corona, 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 because they'll demonetize your video, which they've done, because earlier... I said that I was on holiday and I drank a bottle of Corona. I said that earlier in the video. So now this video has been demonetized. How stupid is that? I didn't mention anything about the other Corona that happened in the world. I just mentioned that I had a beer called Corona on holiday. And for that, my video gets demonetized. What sort of world are we living in? Do you know what I mean? And then you've got to worry about being racist. Uh, can I say the words Japsire? Just said it. Like people were just so sensitive. It really winds me up. <laughs> it proper winds me up. Um oh Jennifer's in. Well, hello boys. The flirtatious entrance as always. Uh you've missed out on a lot of talk, Jennifer, about assholes and having things shoved up them. <laughs> And round the corner. <laughs> Watch the gentleman. It's totes in cred. Totes in cred. Is that like totally incredible? Shemaine's balls. Uh, Michael Slogan. Tastes the same to me. UK brewed Heineken and Dutch version. Doesn't mean Michael. South Park did an episode on people not reading 20 odd pages of terms and conditions. It's ridiculous. Just tell, tell, if you've done something wrong, tell me what I've done wrong so I know not to do it again. What? <laughs> My Corona video is the same, Adam. It's got COVID 19 warnings all over it. Yeah. It's freaking stupid, Simo. And like I say, because I've mentioned it in the street, I'm not being funny. It's one of the most drunk beers in the world. If you're a beer channel, you're going to mention that beer quite often. Do you know what I mean? Because there'll be people asking you what you think about it in lives. You may be reviewing one of the God knows how many versions of it, right? Because you've got the normal one, the alcohol-free one, the light one, the one with lime, and then they're bringing out Walco Pops and all that as well. I mean... It should be more than just saying the word Corona gets you demonetized. It should be like, it should look out for a bit more than just that. That's just ridiculous, isn't it? Corona. <laughs> it don't matter now. I can say as much as I like. As long as I don't actually mention the real one, the other type, that could potentially get me in more trouble. But I'm talking about the beer YouTube, you stupid assholes. Uh, DS, Ali D, they think the people are dumb, but truly the people are pretty darn intelligent. We know what's going on. This is why you're not allowed to talk about it. Because, you know, they don't want people to know what's really going on and what really went on, and they messed up, basically. God forbid the word get around, and nobody trusts them again. Steve, beer monster, entertaining beer reviews, fair play, mate. Check out bands, bike and booze reviews, beer expert. Yeah, definitely, mate. He does a lot more research in that than me, Steve. He really, like, before he reviews a beer, he literally wants to know the whole history of the brewery, everything. Uh, he learns about all the different hops and a lot of respect for what he does. I just, if I'm honest with you, I do wish I did a bit more research, but I'm not a very good reader. Uh, I can read, but it doesn't really register in my head, into my memory, if you know what I mean. Uh, so I just kind of try and learn myself, as in tasting and all that, rather than what I read about beer. I'm not good. I just, I've just i never read a book, because to me, I'll just I'll sit there, I'll read. It could be like, uh, I've got this lecture, so I could read, but I can read. It's weird. I could read like a 300-page book. And to me, I've just read thousands of thousands of words, but there's no story in my mind. You know what I mean? I can't turn them words into a story, into an image. 
So reading is pointless for me in that sense. If it's something short, like comments on the air or like a little newspaper article, a few lines long or whatever, I'm fine. But as soon as it gets like pages and pages, it just <laughs> it completely goes over my head. Don't know if anyone else has that problem. It's been an interesting even to say the least. Yeah, Jennifer. lots of anal talk, uh, anal violation. Um, basically, Jennifer, I've got to have a camera shoved up the ass, and so is Simo. So we're going to get anally violated together. Um, and a few people have already been violated and were telling us about their experiences. <laughs> so yeah, it's been a, been a lot of anal talk, <laughs> and um. Yeah, Paul's experience was absolutely hilarious. Um, hey. Simo Sup Sexual Harassment Panda. Funniest thing I've ever seen. What are you on about? Check out a row. Oh. Check out Deerin. Bosh Corona. You can all drink it now. We've been vaccinated. I fucking ain't. I ain't been vaccinated. And I never will either. But everybody that did, it's fair enough. We're entitled to make our own choice, aren't we? I don't trust the government. I never will trust the government. And anything that they tell me to do, I pretty much don't do. If I can get away with it, I don't trust them at all. And that's why I didn't. YouTube scared of hurty words, though. Exactly, mate. During the lockdown, Americans moved to Modelo because they were scared to get it from the Americans. <laughs> really? I mean, come on. I wonder if they actually affected the sales of Corona beer. I bet it did. Because, because people are like, you know, very superstitious, I suppose, or just fucking stupid. Be interesting, wouldn't it? Jennifer Cross, YouTube just don't want to pay anyone anymore. Yeah, any excuse not to pay you, I don't pay you much anyway, unless you got like a massive channel. You're never going to earn a living off of YouTube, you need either a massive channel. Or super loyal supporters that like, are constantly pumping you shitloads of money. Or a millionaire just to randomly come in and go, here you go, mate. Um, I'm about to die. Do you want a million quid? <laughs> <laughs> Chill out, beer monster. I'm chilled, mate. I'm a very chilled guy. Michael Slocum, I'm 28. I think I was looking at the uh, analytics on my channel the other week. I think the average age that watches my channel is, well, say average age is quite broad, between 34 and 44. But then there's quite a few that watch in the age bracket above that and the age bracket below as well. So don't really tell you that much, really, does it? And the 90, more females, I'm starting to attract more females lately. At one point, the channel was 99% males that viewed it. Now it's 91% males. So I've now got 9% of women on board. What's changed? I don't know. But a few more women are tuning in. Must be the man breasticles. Jennifer Cross, I'm no mega brewing expert, but it's meant to be the strain of yeast that changes the flavour more than the water. 
Mm, well, Jennifer, water's ninety five percent beer, so it's very important. But I'm no brewing expert either. But I would think the main ingredient is going to be the most important ingredient. But then they can do things to change the pH levels and all that of water, can't they? To change it and kind of mimic good quality water that the other countries get. But it's probably still not the same as the real thing. There's a guy I watch who does gaming videos. He's got one million subscribers. And YouTube have permanently demonetized him and won't tell him why. That's ridiculous, mate. When I was on holiday, I was mentioned last night, Nassimo, about I uh, uh, bumped into a guy. Oh, you know, I forgot his name. Something Rhodes. Uh, Dan Rhodes. Has anybody heard of Dan Rhodes? Um, let me just make sure that was his name. Because I'd never heard of the guy. Uh, Dan Rhodes. Has anybody heard of Dan Rhodes? I bumped into him on holiday. Um, and he goes, oh, you're that guy off YouTube, ain't you? And I said, yeah, I've got a YouTube channel, mate. Yeah. And uh, he goes, yeah, you do like beer, beer reviews. I said, yeah. I'll do YouTube as well. I'll do magic and all that. And uh, how many subscribers he's got? 26 million, this guy. And he recognised me. <laughs> I've got like two fans. <laughs> yeah, he's a magician. He's like the new Dynamo or something. He does t he's got like, I think, over 10 million on TikTok as well. 26 million on YouTube. And he's 18 years old. And he's bloody good. Tell you, he's doing all, all these Shamini's tricks and making a £20 note fucking fly across the room and all sorts of stuff. Uh, where was I? This is South Park episode, and I don't watch South Park, so. I've watched a few of them back in the day, like. What's that endoscopy? Is that the one down the throat? Okay. Uh, sexual investment panda, human centipede, the South Park episodes were extending it from the reference earlier. Oh, wow, well, well, yeah. Think how the horses feel getting a whole hand in their ass. <sighs> you wouldn't want a freaking horse's cock in your ass. I know that. Fucking massive, isn't they? Size of a baby's arm. <laughs> Bigger than that, actually, isn't they? Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, Steve. Luckily, he's got a Patreon going. And it's doing well for now, but YouTube just don't give a shit. That's wrong. They got they should tell you, shouldn't they? They're supposed to learn from your mistakes that you make. I mean, people make mistakes. We're only human. You sometimes get a slip of the tongue or you say something perhaps that is offensive and you don't realise. You know, there's so many new things that are happening in the world, and especially people referring to different things, you know, genders and this, that, and the other. Most of it's not intentional. And unless you're told why and explain why what you did is wrong or whatever, you're not going to learn, are you? You can't just get to, just get closed down in no reason. Yeah, I agree with you, LED. 95% bullshit. Michael Slocum, how do you know that? Second of all, don't tell me. <laughs> See, most such as someone super chatted, a million YouTube would take the most of it, yeah. 
<coughs> they'd get their they'd take their fair share, wouldn't they? But um they'll probably start pushing all your content like mad then. You could be doing anything, they'll be like, This guy's just made us all that money. We'll push his content. That's what people don't realise as well. That things like super chats and uh memberships and all that. YouTube, most people will know, take a bit of money. But let's just say if people are giving you money, they're giving YouTube are taking a cut of that money, and that means YouTube is making money off you. And then because YouTube is making money off you, they push your content more because they're like, oh, people like donating money to this guy. So we're going to suggest his content to more people because people tend to give this guy money. It's all big algorithm computer, and it's there to make YouTube money. That's what it is. It's like I was saying to Simo before. He said, "If any like somebody uh, sent him a super chat, like quite a big one, like thirty or forty quid. I think it might have been fifty quid or something like that." And he said, "You should have sent it to me through PayPal." But I said to him, Simo, you're looking at it the wrong way there. Because yeah, if you if he sent it through through PayPal." YouTube wouldn't get their cut, you know, and you get a whole 50 quid. But because he sent it through the super chat, you've made YouTube a bit of money. So your channel is going to get a little bit more of a push, you know. So you've got to look at it like that, if you know what I mean, if you want your channel to grow. Uh, YouTube, whether you like them or not, if your channel's monetized, you're working for YouTube. And if you're making YouTube money, they like it. <laughs> So I reckon if somebody super chatted a million, you'll be on everybody's front pages. <laughs> Check this guy's channel out. You ain't even done anything different than what you've been doing, apart from YouTube's you've you've YouTube's algorithm has accepted you because you've made them a load of money. Jennifer says, Oh my god, I lied a lot on my profile age. <laughs> LED females got attached to the topless titty video. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that must be what it is, Ellie. Yeah, it was the topless cheap cider battle. Got all, got all the birds in. <laughs> the man bristles. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I'm surprised I didn't scare a few more of them off. <laughs> that surprised me, that video. Like literally a few two cheap ciders and like a pound each or something. And it got like it's got like one thousand five hundred views or something like that. That topless beer battle. <laughs> make it make sense. Sometimes you make a video and you think, I think people are really gonna enjoy this and I think it's gonna do well. And it does terrible. And sometimes you just come up with something random like that. And it does really well and you think, like, hey, <laughs> you know what I mean? what's what's that about? <laughs> Get your tits out and you get loads of views. <laughs> See, most ups, I think most of YouTube is just automated these days and they don't care. Yeah, exactly. Simo, they, they, they just want to make money. If you're making their money, that's the algorithm, that's, that's what gets you the push. So, as far as wanting your channel to grow, Simo. You're better off as far as you'll get more subscribers than that if you don't get people to donate through PayPal. We think of it in the long run. If people will, you're not going to get the full donation, but you do work for YouTube, and every time someone donates, they get their bit, and it helps your channel because they push your content more. Endoscopy is down the throat, one of the most unpleasant experiences. Oh, I can imagine. Like, full deep throat, in it? <laughs> I've had the one up the nose. Uh, I don't know what that's called. Bogeyostomy or something, I don't know. But that, I've got to say, was not bad at all. The, the, the most minor thing. I was really, I didn't really get time to worry about it. But once you pulled the camera out, and I was like, okay, I'm having the camera shoved up your nose. It was minor. It was so minor. It didn't hurt. Not one bit. 
I'd quite happily have it done again, no worries. I think is um the only the only thing it really done was made me sneeze after. Didn't even know. I couldn't believe it when he said it was done. Uh yeah, endoscopy is down the throat. I I don't want it's why they try to kill ad blockers, all that money for these feckers, yeah. Yeah, of course, people watching your adverts, YouTube likes that as well because you split the profits you make from adverts with YouTube. Everything's split with YouTube. Like you make, as a creator, you make money from that, people watching your adverts. Um, but also YouTube kind of take a bit of that money as well. Um, but there's a certain loopholes. I don't know if it's true, but I've heard this is like if you want to help if you want to help creators out, three ways to do it. The best three ways to help a creator out is liking their videos, liking the any of their content, just like it. Because YouTube thinks, oh, you like that. You forget. I watch people's stuff all the time that I do like and I forget to like it, but it helps that person and it costs for it don't cost anything. Of course, subscribing helps. Um Oh, what was the other thing? Um, it's like a really random thing that helps people. This has gone out of my brain. Uh, what was I reading? Oh, yeah, like an advert, for example. Say a 10-minute advert comes on, and you think, oh, I like this creator, but sod watching that. I ain't going to sit here and watch an advert about bleeding Barbie dolls for 10 minutes. You've only got to watch 30 seconds of that advert, and then uh, the person gets paid. And they get paid more for the long adverts than the short adverts. The not the ones that you can't skip, you don't get much for. The ones that you can skip, you get more for. And the long adverts, you don't have to watch the whole thing. As long as you watch 30 seconds, that meets the threshold. But I mean, who's gonna watch 30 seconds? You're not I unless it's saying that interests you like a new film out or something that catches your eye, or a new computer game or whatever you're into. Simo, even if it's not aimed at beer folks anyway, I put short out tonight asking for help in a game. <laughs> See if I can hit the market. Yeah. You can definitely I'm starting to like think more broadly about YouTube and like perhaps doing more than just beer. Um Certain things come hand in hand with beer, don't they? If you really think about it, like sports, you could do something with sports. You've only got to look at the chat, your chat, or what do people talk about in your chat. In my chat, we talk about arseholes. So I could make a video about arseholes. And sport, people talk about football all the time in there. If I was to make a video about football, not everybody's going to watch it because not everybody's interested in football, but a vast majority of people that drink beer watch football. So there's certain, you know, things you could do. Or go to pubs, St. do a pubs. Just think what people, people that drink beer, what else are they like? Uh, Steve. When a local pub to watch the football last night, never a fan of the boozer in the past, visited it five times recently. First time I bought Al on Happy Days. Next four visits is off on tomorrow. So it's back on tomorrow, Steve. You're lucky, mate. My local pub, there's only one hour. Uh, my nearest pub, I never go, I haven't been to it for two years. I only do one hour and it's Green King IPA. <laughs> Do me a favour. Um, and then the lagers is Madri, Coors Light, or Carlin. You know, it's one of them sort of pubs. Uh, Parramatta. You've seen his new roller coaster opening at Fort Park. Now testing. This new rule. I've not been Fort Park for years. We tend to go Cheserton because... Um, Mrs. loves Cheserton for some reason. She's always wanting to go Cheserton. She's like a bit of adrenaline junkie. 
I hate the rides, I do. I'm not allowed to go on them anyway because of my health problems. But even if I could, I wouldn't. <laughs> I don't see that as fun, being spun upside down and all that on a roller coaster. No, thank you. Uh, AD, got to go, Ad. Uh, got 6 a.m. start again tomorrow. Be interesting chat. Laughed my head off, though. Chat to you soon, bro. And chat. Thanks, Ali. Uh, I'll be going live tomorrow as well, so I'm not going to do like a mad one tonight. I might maybe stay on for another 20 minutes. Uh, I just got bored and wanted to come and chat. And uh, I'm glad people, some people have showed up. And uh, thank you. I just got bored. I just felt like a chat. You know, sometimes you just feel a bit lonely. Mrs. went to bed early. Kids are in bed. Didn't feel like watching a film. Didn't really feel like playing the PlayStation. Just felt like doing a bit of socialising. Uh, Casey, Hannah, I'm gassy today. You've been uh, letting some rip, Casey. Shit, your knickers. <laughs> Jennifer Cross, what are you whining about? Get one of them camera things for your phone from Alibaba for a fiver and do your own videos. <laughs> When I have that camera up my ass, do I watch the screen or not? What do you think, people? Do I want to see inside my arsehole? Could be a once-in-a-life opportunity, couldn't it? Steve, hey, Gassy Casey, do me a favour. <laughs> One thing you've got to give Casey, she's consistent. Every single day, right? Every single day, without foul, for the last few months, Casey has commented on one of my videos, either asking if I've done any farts or if I'm gassy or something like that. Every single day, you're gassy today. <laughs> she loves a fart. Where's all the Tottenham supporters hiding? Andreas, how you doing? Good to see you, mate. Hope you're doing well. Uh, what's what is your favourite, Steve? Favourite what, Casey? Shagman's in. Jagger the Shagger. How you doing, Jagman? You. Dirty slag. Steve, all right. <laughs> Cassius Lady. Tan, Taylor's landlord on cask at my local. You're a lucky man, Steve. I do like Tim Free Taylor. It's lovely on this lovely on the uh, cask. I went for a carver a few weeks back. I think I might have mentioned to you. And they had Tim Free Taylor's on tap. It was just lovely. Really nice, easy drinking now. I always suggest that to anybody who's looking to perhaps try it out. And maybe they've tried some in the past and they've thought, no, nah, I'll stick to my lager. Try something like Timothy Taylor's. It's just so easy drinking. It's a really good introductory owl. But it's also, even when you're into owls, really good still. Especially for a session, because it's only about 4.3%, I think. It's also quite nice out of a bottle, but obviously... Better on cask. <laughs> Paramount, Jonathan Ross show, showed his own colon colonos. <laughs> I have trouble with that word. <laughs> Considering I'm going to have one done. Oh, no, well, that's the math one, isn't it? The BBC in 2000. So. Jagman, all good here, fella. Hope you will. Yeah, I'm not doing too bad, mate. We're just, uh, sort of, we've been talking about arseholes a lot. So that probably relates to you, mate. I've got to have a camera up my ass and so Simo. And Paul's Paul's already had one, so we've been talking about that. And um the camera's been shoved in serious uh various holes. Some people have had one in the mouth, some people have had one up the nose, up the bum. Um <laughs> things we talk about, eh? You've got to love the whole randomness of it. Coming here thinking you're gonna talk about beer and you talk about arseholes. Uh 
Right. I am going to go and drain the anaconda. Don't mean have a wank when I say that, by the way. I'm going to go for a piss and grab another couple of these little Heinekens. And they'll probably be my last ones. Guess who's back? Um, these last uh, couple of Heineken's sounds a bit German, that doesn't it? Heineken was just me. Yeah, just in case anyone's confused, I am still going live tomorrow. People will keep coming and going and that. I am still live tomorrow around nine o'clock. Um, I just got bored tonight, so I thought I'd come on. Oh. All good here, fella. I hope you're well. Yeah, I'm good, Jagger the Shagger. I think I would read that one, didn't I? Um, butt chugging, that was a thing. <laughs> butt chugging. What, drinking a beer for your ass and spit it in someone's face? <laughs> or fart in someone's face? I don't know, but I bet Casey's getting turned right on. Casey, what is your preferred <laughs> tincture? Robert Hinscliffe. How you doing, mate? Good to uh, have you, mate. Thanks for joining the live. How you doing, Robert, mate? Are you having a beer tonight? Uh, Steve, don't wish to hear about a bloke doing five knuckle shuffle. <laughs> nice to be free of those days. <laughs> no, I didn't go for a five knuckle shuffle. Don't know, that'd be quick, wouldn't it? <laughs> Just gonna knock one out, bash back in like 10 seconds later. <laughs> Perfected the art of the five knuckle shuffle. <laughs> How's the missus doing, Jagman, anyway? Uh, things still going away between you two? Paramount, Jonathan Voss showed... Oh, I read that one. I keep reading the same comments. Um, just cracked open a brew dog planet parallel, uh, says Robert. I had that um, a few live streams ago. I was gifted a bottle of um, brew dog beers for Christmas. Um, it had like four different ones in or something, five different ones, two of each one. And that was one of the beers in that. I was kind of like, oh, thank you. Yeah, not not the best for me, but if you enjoy it, you enjoy it, didn't you? We're all different. Brewdog never again for me. There's a lot of hate for Brewdog, I've noticed, actually. I don't mind some of their stuff, but the stuff I have from Brewdog that I've enjoyed tends to be the least um, lesser known ones. Like there was one I had in Home Bargains called uh, Albino Squid Assassin, and I paid something like 69p a can of it. And it's fucking lovely. It's like, why don't we see that one in the shops? 
And uh, there's a stout I had as well. Um, I'm sure it was in a grey can. I can't remember what it was called, but I remember really liking it. Sort of went into the review and thought, oh, here we go, Brewdog. But they do know how to make good beer when they're not just thinking of making money and they actually put the effort in. They do know how to do it, but they're just all for the money these days. It's all mass-produced shit. But when they want to and they do – because – for me, when you if you want to try Brewdog beers and you want to get a good beer, if you read the can, every now and again they do small batch releases, which means it's not like pumped out, like freaking Punk IPA and Brewdog Lost Lager and all that. It's more of a, just a small batch. So it's more like how they used to do things. They're the kind of ones that tend to be better, from my experience anyway. I'm looking a bit red. And me, uh, me, Jennifer, I could be. I've got really pale complexion. Uh, I'm not bloody shameless at WWE. <laughs> Is it shameless? That wrestler, or the ginger guy. I really like skin. And even like, even though it's been raining today, the sun's come out a little bit, I proper burn really easily. I've I've been, I've got sunburn in January before, about four or five years ago. The sun come out for like half hour in January, and uh, it's late that evening. I I was burnt. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> in the winter, I've got like factor fifty all over. <laughs> Home bargains one pound nine. Oh, was that the um, Brewdog Albino one? That might be cheaper than chips, lol. <laughs> Oh, you got the, Bla the Planet Powered Alpha one pound nine. Yeah, I've seen it in there, mate. Is it? Is the bottles in it? Uh, Jagman, all good, mate. Picked a good one this time. She keeps me on the straight and narrow, but we'll have her on the tube Saturday night. That's always fun. <laughs> do do you have your own channel then, Jagman, or are you join in? Um, like Simo stream or something like that. Well, but Hinchcliffe, have you tried Utopia? No, I haven't, but I've heard good things about it. I haven't. I've not tried much craft beers as far as like, I mean, if you can get it in home bargains or supermarket, I've tried a lot of them sort of ones, but. You know, I'm a bit of a budget. So a lot of the fancy ones I've not tried. And I don't seem to be as much interest in them as well. Like you'll pay sort of five, six quid a can, or whatever, even more for some of these craft beers. And nobody watches that's so like you know, you don't make uh no money back on the video. And you're paying for a really expensive beer. I think I prefer doing them more sort of like I like trying to try loads of different beers, but I also like not always. I'll sort of you know have your dabble with other things and your craft beer and that, but I like to keep my channel as much as possible accessible to people, which is why I do a lot of home bargains and that. Um, you know, people that perhaps don't have a lot of money, like me, uh, beers that everybody can try, you know, not everybody can afford really expensive beers, everybody can afford a 69p beer in a home bargain, so that's my kind of thinking, you know. Um, but every now and again, I'll do the odd order on beers of Europe and stuff like that because every now and again, people like to treat themselves, don't they? Christmas time and stuff like that. Can I get some German, German, nice German ones in? Uh, Brewdog used to be brilliant. Still have their moments. Almost famous is banging New England IPA. I've not tried that one, Paramount. Yeah, they did used to be really good, didn't they? It's, um, the bigger the company got, the worse the beer got. Home bargains is shy. My home bargains is shy. I love home bargains. I, like, don't get me wrong. I, 
it's a funny, funny relationship with own bargains. I've tried some of the best beers I've had from own bargains. I've also tried some of the absolute worst. There's just that element of unpredictability. <laughs> you don't just don't know what you're going to get. And every week I go in there, there's something new. And that's what I like about it. Because I do struggle to find beers to review, like that you can pick up in all the supermarkets. Because you know, there's there's not as many beers getting released as I'm fast as I'm pumping out the reviews. And to be honest with you, most of the time when I make an order on beers of Europe or like a little craft beer box or something, it's because I can't find nothing in the supermarkets. And I think, well, I order 30 beers from beers of Europe. That gives me like a month or so for content. And then hopefully by then there's some new ones for me to try in the supermarket sort of thing, you know. I stick with my Belgian owls sipping on. Oh, I, I had that. I had that. Um, when did I have that? I was supposed to review it, but I drank it on a live and it was absolutely lovely. Thinking might have been the last live I'd done. Can't remember. Probably wrong, but it was very nice, but strong. <laughs> Red after bathroom visit. Red after bathroom visit. Oh, me. I, I, I forgot what you were talking about for a sec there. I thought you was trying to tell me you come on your period or something. <laughs> 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 uh, it's probably the camera. It's probably uh, it's got a wide focus and all that, and all. it's probably just decided it wants to make me look different than what it did earlier. <laughs> yeah, I've heard they're really good, uh, Robert. I'll see if anyone is live. If not, I go live now and then. I mean, I'm still using the YouTube thing in a minute. I think to have guests, I'd have to use um, StreamYard, uh, which I like doing. I like having guests on. I'd used it once, and I had um, I had a guest on. And it was really good. Um, Mr. Ronald, we had a good chat. He's a really nice guy. But what I don't want personally is I don't like talking to too many people at once. It gets a bit messy. So like, uh, perhaps I'd have to kind of arrange if anybody wants to come on. Like one week I could have one or two people on. Next week, one or two people on. But I don't just want to leave you open. And the next thing you've got 10 people in, all talking over each other. And um, yeah, work with my anxiety. I don't like dealing with too many people at once. It just it ends up just giving me a headache. So I, I love going on Simo's channel, but I don't like it when it gets too messy and there's like crap loads of people on. When there's a few, you can have a better chat, I think. It comes to a point where it can be too many. Uh, have you ever done a mystery box? I have done a mystery box, but not off beer merchants. I've done one off low-cost beer, and uh, it was crap. And... Um, they watched my video on YouTube where I was ripping the crap out of them. And they emailed me and sent me a box of absolutely fantastic beards. Say sorry. I most didn't make the review, though. When I had that bit of time off, I got through them. They were really good beers they sent me. I still got one in the fridge. I got Delirium, uh, Delirium Red, which I re will review at some point. But isn't it something crazy, like 10% or something? I was picking the right moment for it. Um, Robert Hinchcliffe, I tried that Sharps Offshore the other day from Home Bargains. I agree with your review, review, review Adam. Yeah, cheers, Robert. Yeah, it's, um, at the end of the day, it's 69p, but it tastes a bit like 69p. You know, it's, it's okay. For 69p, it's worth the money, as long as you don't mind drinking a beer that don't taste like much. You know what I mean? It's... Um, Mm, yeah, it doesn't do a lot for me. The mouthfeel in that was quite good. Um, it's a bit of citrusy, 
but there's no bit. It's called a pilsner. For me, when you're having pilsner, you want a nice bitterness and a bit of spice, or a bit of a, like a herbal thing going on or something. And it just didn't have it. But a 69p, can you complain too much? Not really. No, it, it refreshes you, but it's not good beer. You know what I mean? It's just sort of one, one of them ones for me. Uh, Steve lived in Warsaw, Poland in January. Told me my boss was going back to the UK to help my old father for a week. A liar. I went to Costa del Sol, 20 Celsius, got sunburn, went back to Poland, minus 10. Well, that's, that's a big jump. That's a big jump in temperature there. <laughs> to bullshit my boss. <sighs> Bob has got some Zubo in the fridge. We'll be going for that soon, Steve. Zubo, I've had that. I think I think I like that one. Is that the one with the bison on? I've tried a lot of Polish beer actually. I get on quite well with uh, there's a Dan Tan in June. There's a Polish shop in there where they sell all sorts of like Polish snacks and Polish drinks and sweets, all sorts. Really nice people in there. And they always tell me like what beers are popular in Poland and all that. Drunk Zuba many times, best Polish snack. Yeah, I like Zuba. It's one of them beers where, in fact, it's been so long since I've had it, I could be think, mixing up with something else here. But is it quite syrupy, but still nice? Like Some beers, they use the glucose syrup, but they still were okay. And I think Zuba might have been one of them ones where, despite the fact they use quite a lot of syrup in it, it still kind of works. But there's a f most beers that use glucose syrup I don't like, but I didn't mind that. Another one I don't mind is wholesome pills. There's syrup in it, clearly, when you drink it. But it tastes all right. You know, for an average sort of lager you're going to pick up in most off-licenses, it's better than most of the other options. It's like they use just the right amount of syrup. It's not too much. Uh Robert, don't know if you've been to Poland. Beer Halle Brew Pubs, great Pilsner beer. I love Pilsners. I've got right into them since I started the channel. I didn't even know what a Pilsner was when I started the channel. I've learned so much about beer. Like literally the first time I switched on the camera and made my first video, that was my journey in beer. Uh, I didn't know nothing, hardly. I'd say I knew a fair bit about lager, but that was about it, because that's what I used to drink. And uh, I just randomly tried a few different beers one day and thought, God, why have I been drinking been UK brewed Foster's and Stella and stuff like that, thinking it's good? And uh, I thought, yeah, let's go on a little journey. And then I thought that for about two years before I was brave enough to switch the camera on. But I did start trying beers a while before I made the first video, I guess. Practicing a bit. But with my anxiety, it literally took me two years to put, switch the camera on. For two years, I wanted to make a channel about beer. Two years. And I was watching a lot of other beer reviewers and stuff like that. One day I just thought, sod it. Because I, I think watched, I watched a video about YouTube in general. It was nothing to do with beer. And it was about sort of making your first video or something. And the guy was just like, just switch the camera on. He said, I can promise you, your first video is going to be crap. You're going to look back on it and you're going to cringe. Um, you're going to make all sorts of mistakes. You're not going to like your first video. But it starts the journey off, and your next video will be maybe like zero point one percent better. And in time, you get more confident, you get better at what you do, you you know. And that's really interesting sort of journey. And I do back on my first videos, and I do cringe a bit, but I also notice how much more confident I've got. It's actually insane. It's like, and that's why I like doing YouTube. It helps me in my confidence of talking to people and stuff because when you've got anxiety, it's really difficult. Like, I'll if I go to a pub now, I'll go, I'll purposely sit 
in the quietest place in the pub just so that I don't have to go near anyone. It's so weird. And if I know someone, I'm all right. But if I don't know anyone, I'll just go and sit with my own. If there's someone in there I know, I'll go and sit with them. But, yeah, for that reason, I don't, I don't make friends. Lozma Peels, love that. I know I've had that one. I recognise the name. I can't remember what I thought of it. But I liked a lot of the Polish beers that I've reviewed on the channel, actually. But I did review them before I tried German beer. I've done a Polish week once. Well, the beer merchants mystery box is really good. All past best before, but most still in good shape. Lots of verdant cans. Well, that's sounds a lot better than the, the crap I got given Parameta. Beer merchants. How much was the mystery box and how many beers did you get or beverages? I might have to look into that. Uh, Robert, I do like the mystery box. It's think about the unknown. It excites me. Even though the chances are I'll probably get given some beers I've already done. I just I like the surprise. I think the big kid in me is never quite gone. Walk four, they're all gone. <laughs> Nama slow pills. I've had Nama slow pills. I like that. Yeah. As in, they got like a green picture of a hop on the front or something, if I remember rightly. Carpaki. Don't be racist. Gotta be careful, ain't you? I've had <laughs> I've had the car car packy, the normal, like sensible one that's like five percent. And I've also had the car packy, the one that comes in the black pan black pan, black can is like nine percent. And I could feel it burning me insides as I was drinking it. <laughs> I've not had that one again since, and I don't think I ever will. But they got a lot of views for some reason. A lot of Polish views. Uh, a lot of Polish people got recommended that video of when I drank the uh, Carpaki premium 9% beer. And I, I, I sort of said to them in the comments, like, why are so many people, Polish people, getting suggested this video? And I was like, oh, because anyone who drinks that beer over here has got no self respect. And we all were <laughs> like laughing at you, English drinking it. I was like, oh, cheers. So basically, you will click the recommendation because you think I'm a twat. <laughs> Yeah, Polish make a lot of strong beers. They're not shy with the ABV. Narco had a fair play to you for doing that live the other day. Had a fair amount of, of people in. I can't remember what live. Was that the last one I did? Um, Adam, have you tried Thornbridge Jaipur? Yeah, I've tried that. I've also tried the double dry hopped Jaipur. I think it's double dry hopped, or was it just double Jaipur? But there's a, one in a green can that I tried as well. A long time ago. But long time ago, as in probably about a year ago. But when I'm trying different beers every day, that's a long time ago, as far as being able to remember too much about it. But I remember liking it. I think I might have preferred the original one. I could be wrong. Damn, the Zuba tempted me with saving it till last. I like drinking the the best ones first when you appreciate them more. Then like once I'm a few beers in, I'll tend to go to the cheaper stuff because you stop appreciating it after a while, don't you? That's me anyway. I've had the Lozma, try chain. I'm not sure I've had that. I've had the Jasney, Jasney Pelner, but I've not had the Jasney Light. Jenny of course, they said the pubs are dying. I think off licenses are more dead. Tesco's in Sainsbury's locals have killed them all, and yeah, so you just get the mega pork beers. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I was talking to the guy in my um, local off license. He's, a, he's actually a subscriber of the channel. Because um, he's like, why are you always coming in here buying beer? Because <laughs> I, I do beer reviews. It turns out he does TikTok as well, funny enough. But um, I said to him, you need to get imported Stella and things like that. 
and now they brought out this new Cronenberg. You need to get the the old the French one, the five and a half percent one, because even the five percent Cronenberg, which we was getting, is actually not the same as the Cronenberg in France is five and a half percent. So that was never the same stuff. But now it's just piss water. Um, yeah, if off licenses can get stuff imported, the real stuff, I think people will go out of their way to get their beer from the off license. I mean, I would quite happily pay a little bit extra for the real Stella than the crap we get over here, you know, or the Cronenberg or whatever beer. If it's the proper version, I'd rather pay more for it. So I, so I put from my own bargains, it was okay, maybe not kept properly. A lot of people, um, Robert, uh, have said Dryper is a good beer still, but it used to be better. Uh, and that's probably a bit like the brew dog situation where it becomes popular and perhaps not the same care is maybe put into it as we used to be. I don't know. I've not had it enough times. Well, I never had it back before when people said it was better to be able to judge it for myself. But word of mouth is from what people have told me, um, Jaipur used to be better than what it is now when it was like a more of a small scale brew. 19 pound 99 for 12, for 12, 12 cans. What about postage? That sounds really reasonable. Actually, Jagger the Shagger says, yeah, I sit on my own normally when I am starches in the pub. <laughs> Starkers in the pub. Steve, Poland produces great owls. <coughs> As something they don't really stock in my um, local Polish shop is the owls. They tend to just be lagers or like lagers with honey in. Stuff like that. Polish tramp juice, yeah. <laughs> Get drunk on that once. Yeah, I'm probably just pronouncing it wrong, Steve. <laughs> of course it's not racist, but you can never be too careful these days. Viva Polska. Apparently, Fongbridge have the Westy IPA in Asda for three quid and four for free. I do like a West Coast IPA. A friend of mine, um, not real friend, a YouTube friend, uh, Speno, one of these channels called the Spencer Arms. You might remember him, he sent me a beer once. He um he reviewed a new beer from Thornbridge a couple of days ago. Um, what was it called? I think it was called Hef. And it's um Thornbridge's take on a wheat beer. And he reckons it's absolutely cracking. He reviewed it and then he opened up a Vine Stefano Weiss beer. And he sort of thought, well, yeah, this tastes really good, but let's compare it to like a, one of the Germans' finest sort of thing. And he reckons it stood up against the German one. And it had like kind of like a bubble gummy taste, what you sometimes get from the wheat beers. I really want to try that now. I don't know if anybody's tried that, but I love I love wheat beer, and so I'd, I'd love to give that one a bash to find a decent wheat beer brewed in the UK. Marco March beer. Eight pints of dry up, a 5.9 got me in trouble in the pub once. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Eight pints, 5.9 catches up with you after a while, wouldn't it? That, that ABV. It's like a, a few times um, I've like sessioned left uh, when it was 6.6 .6 in the pub and uh, gets a bit messy <laughs> after a while. <laughs> It's a shame. I'd lo I would love an off license if it had good stuff. Dryper always good, still good, in my opinion. Do 
Depends on the craft beer, Robert. No, it's a stout. I wouldn't chill it. For example, there's a lager. Treat it like a lager. Uh, just be to have a, a few nice non-big brand stuff to try now and again. You're not full tramp to drink night train. <laughs> It's not full tramp, but it's the same thing for <laughs> Duncan's in. Hey there, Duncan, mate. Still pissed off about Cronenberg Larry in their ABV. It's a shame it was decent beer before. Now I just see that shitty 4.6 Cronenberg everywhere now. Yeah, Cronenberg, yes, Cronenberg. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame. It's... What the thing with all this lowering the ABV, what really pisses me off, right? For example, if you take food, let's say, for example, I don't know, it could be a jar of curry sauce. Every now and again, the company decides to change the recipe. And it says on it, like, new improved recipe or whatever, because they've tried to make their product better. Right. The reason they don't do that when they lower the ABV, because they know they've not made the product better. So they don't mention it on the can, because they know they're giving you an inferior product just to save themselves money. That's why they don't mention it. Because let's be honest, if they was being honest, they would write new, lower ABV, shitter quality version is what they'd have to write. So they just choose not to write nothing. But the problem with that is a lot of people pick it up. They chase it. They go, oh, that's that's not the same. Then they notice that, that it's been lowered in ABV. Now that's wrong. You should have to mention it that you've changed lowered the ABV for me for at least six months or something on the front of the beer because they do it so deceptively. Like Cronenberg, they've changed the look of the can and you think, oh, they've just gone for a new sort of look. But they don't mention on that new can that the reason they've changed the can is because they've changed the beer. It's not Cronenberg anymore that people some people loved you know the five percent one it's a completely different beer the same thing happened with stella a while back uh, you know kept getting reduced and then when it got reduced to 4.6 is just the ultimate piss take and i completely boycotted it then it's to save themselves money it's greed and the, the thing that's a shame is that a lot of people won't notice Freddie Burr, how you doing, Freddie? Good to have you, mate. You're good, Adam, mate. Thought I'd tune in real quick and have a quick Zywek as a shop. Didn't have Stella. Why not, mate? It's probably better than Stella if it ain't the um, if it's the UK brewed one. <laughs> uh, not Stella. I mean Holston Pills. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> uh, the Majestic Warehouse. Not that it has beer, but fuck me, it's a silly place. Freddie says, see you went on a holiday the other day. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks, mate. Um, I'll give that video a watch later. I'm going on my first lads holiday to Tenerife tonight. Oh, nice one, mate. You enjoy, mate. It sounds, it sounds like uh, you'll have a great time anyway, especially if you're, with your mates. Yeah, just to let you know, Freddie, that video is like 28 minutes long, the holiday one I've done. It's the first time I've done a vlog, so don't expect it to be great. It was heat at the moment. I didn't start doing it till like halfway through the holiday. And um, I didn't take no equipment with me. I just had my phone. I didn't even have a selfie stick. So it's all just done in vertical. So if you do watch the holiday vlog I've done, I would recommend watching it on your phone. Because if you watch it on your phone, it's a bit like when you watch a short, you know, it covers the full screen. If you watch it on your TV, it's just going to be like a little thin thing in the middle. <laughs> so watch, I'd recommend the best viewed on your phone. But next time I do one, I'll take a selfie stick so I can do it in the landscape and all that, you know. Well, I'm crying, didn't I? Um, Paramount, I like cheese. Oh, I love cheese. But I try not to have too much of it because I've got high cholesterol. But I do like cheese. Cheese goes well with beer as well, I think. Just having some bit tongue. Anyone had it? 
build on. <sighs> yeah, I've had it, mate. Uh, is that the Pilsner? Oh, my laptop's about to die. Hang on. The batteries lasted quite well. Two and a, two and a half hours. Live streaming. Quite impressive. Now I've got to try and find the aisle. I think I would have no issue, wouldn't you, with all my kids? Come on. Penetrate that hole. Bosh, there we go. Why is everything reminding me? Oh, why is everything reminding me of that procedure I've got to have done? <laughs> Jesus. Uh, where was we? Back soon. Stilton, best cheese in the world. Fuck the French stuff. I do like Stilton. I only have it at Christmas, really, but I do like it. It, it took me a while to get into it. Like, when I first tried it, I didn't like it because it's so strong, isn't it? Um, but as I got older, I started enjoying it more. Um, Shropshire Blue for me. Michael Slocum, I wish I was living in Germany because I messed up pretty much every beer in the UK. The Germans... They don't mess about, do they? they? They're so consistent with their beer. I thought I had another can. Am I going mad? Can I drink both of them? Oh, I'm still fitting this one. Uh, oh my god I was in Aldi this afternoon and they do fake Carlin it's 3.4% but it's £2.25 for four cans of Carters I've seen that I've seen that but I've been too scared to review it <laughs> and it's been a long time since I tried Carlin because even before I started the channel I've always hated Carlin with a passion. The only Carlin be, uh, beer I've reviewed is a Carlin Nitro that was in Home Bargains, and that was just as bad. Um, so, yeah, if it's a Carlin clone, I mean, I could do a beer battle. But I know I'm not going to enjoy <laughs> I'm not going to enjoy the Carlin, that's for sure. I absolutely used to hate it. Uh, I've not had Carlin for probably 10 years. As far as I can remember, I probably have had it. <laughs> but um, it used to taste really metallic, I thought. Big Buddha blue cheese for me. I'm not sure I'll try the big for the I'll just normally buy whatever one's going. Cheapest one. <laughs> Don't understand why people like UK style. It's disgusting. It is. I agree, Duncan. Uh, used to be great. Until they lowered the ABV. And um, sometimes I think people just get caught in the the rut of, you know, I'm a stellar drinker and they just stick to what they know. And even when it gets reduced, they just stick by it. It's almost like brand loyalty, if you like. Then sometimes it takes something to get you away from it. And I was kind of like that myself. I was always a stellar drinker when it was good. And I realised, this is before I started the YouTube channel, I started it just sort of when that whole thing sort of happened with Stella and they reduced it to 4.6. And then... Um, I think I've told some of you this before, but I bought this is when the C word was about. I'm not talking about the beer. Um, I drank it and I thought I had it that that uh, virus that was going about because I couldn't taste anything. 
apart from not an astringent sort of uh, bitterness on the end. <laughs> and I thought, what's going on here? Because, again, the, the can looked the same. They just changed the beer. They didn't mention it. You know, back then, I weren't a beer reviewer. I just drank me beer. I thought, yep, I'm drinking a can of Stella, and it didn't taste right. I thought I was ill. I actually thought I was ill. It's only when I looked at the can and I realised, hang on, you know, that's a bit naughty. But I thought I was ill the first time I tried the four point six dollar because again, didn't say new recipe. The can looked exactly the same, just naughty in it. German purity law, everyone needs one. Yeah, wouldn't it be great, eh? Freddie Burr, so glad it's spring and brightening up the weather. The winter can be a bit harsh. As I'm a landscaper, now a few more jobs are coming in. I do want to get round to one of them micro pubs. Yeah, micro pubs are good for me. Small, not too many people, and people tend to be quite welcoming. And I love trying all the different beers. Absolutely love it. I'm, I'm well in my happy place in a micro pub because, as I say, they. They love like a list of owls and that on real owl. It's all real owl. Most of them don't even do a lager. Some of them might have like a little uh, perfect draft machine or something with a lager in, just for the few people that are too stubborn to try anything else. Um, but yeah, I love trying all the different ones. I just go through the whole list and talk to people about what they're tasting and stuff like that. Um, and that's when I first actually realised that I was quite good at um, picking out the flavours and that in beers. I actually be surprised myself because it was my first time like properly getting into ours and that. And, uh, you know, the staff and all that and the locals are asking me, you know, just being polite, oh, what can you taste? And I'm telling them what I can taste. And the guys are like, because this particular place, they actually brewed the beer there. And then there's like a tap room, you know. And it was like, you've absolutely nailed it with some of them descriptions you've gave of these beers. Um, have you done this before? I was like, no. <laughs> didn't get them all right. But certain ones, certain styles of beer are easier than others for me anyway. We're all different. We all taste different things at the end of the day. Don't mean you're wrong because you can taste something that someone else can't. You can get a can of Coke for that. For that money. I work in South Africa a lot. Carlin from South Africa Breweries, SAB. It's a bit crap and metallic. Yeah, I've always found Carlin super metallic. Teller is now so weak it can't legitimately be called a wife beater anymore. It's weasel piss now, isn't it? It's not it's not wife beater. <sighs> Paramount, what's your guilty pleasure with beer? Personally, mine is Foster's. Isn't that bad compared to the equivalents? I would have agreed with you with Foster's to a degree a few months ago. Port Foster's has been lowered to 3.7% now. And for me, it's a lot worse. It's just recently been lowered to 3.7%. And it's really tasteless now for me. That's never the most flavoursome beer. But as far as like a session lager, you know, I could put up with it before, especially before I started doing the beer reviews and that. And I knew I was in, for, in it for the long haul. A lot of time I'd drink Foster's. Um, but guilty pleasure. What well, as far as like something that perhaps not really rated well by the most that I don't mind. Uh, the first one that springs to mind, and it's a weird one, and I, I think I remember doing the review of this beer, and it's one of the weirdest reviews I've done. Um, would be Desperados. <laughs> and it's like, I know it's crap. I know it's full of crap. I know it's not good beer. And um, 
all that. I sort of said in the review, like, this is crap. This beer is absolutely shit. I said in the review, it's terrible stuff. It really is, I'm going. But for some reason, I don't mind it. <laughs> it's like, I know it's terrible. I know it's crap. This is not good beer. I'm like, this, this is awful. But I quite like it. And I don't know why, because I know it's crap. So that would probably be one. <laughs> uh, and it is crap. I know it's crap, but I don't mind it. You know, I don't know why. Um, but on a hot day, sometimes it just hits the spot. I've got to be in the mood for it, you know, because it's got tequila in it, isn't it? I disagree, Steve. I do like the Belgium seller. I think it's, I like the sort of, the. I like lagers that have got a bit of bite to them on the end. And the Belgian one had almost like kind of evil kind of aftertaste. I think it's partly why it's called wife beater as well. And I miss that, that aftertaste of Stella. And sometimes if I do try to U drink the UK one, because I'm a pie or whatever, and you sort of drink it and sometimes you're expecting it to taste like it used to and you're just like, this is crap. So crap now. Just because it looks the same, sometimes you, you still buy it thinking it's going to be the same. Red Bull Pro Plus in the sleep for days. Another thing that is this not beer related, but another guilty pleasure, I suppose. I do like Sambuca. Again, I know it's crazy, so sweet. I don't like sweet stuff, but for some reason, I like Sambuca. It gives me evil hangovers as well. <laughs> but if I'm just wanting to get smashed and I'm like, I'm not there or something, sometimes it gets towards the end of the night and I'm not quite where I want to be. A couple of shots of Sambuca. <laughs> it's crap, I know it is. I tried to do Val Triple. Had to, woke up 10 hours later. Is that the one with the citra in it, Jennifer? I love that beer. Freddie Burst, my local, has got rid of Star Prime and for Peroni. Gutted me. Oh, no. Don't. When I went on holiday, I, I downloaded the app before I went to the bar. And uh, it's like a Park Dean Resorts app. And I thought I'd see what beers are going to be up the clubhouse later. And I didn't like log into that particular campsite. So I was just looking at the list of Park Dean overall. And it was coming up with Star Apartment. And I thought, yeah, I love Star Apartment on tap. I absolutely love it. I thought, yeah, let's get down that clubhouse. And it was like silly, like 6 50 a pint. But I thought, Star Apartment, there's one beer I don't mind paying over the odds for on tap. It would probably be that lager wise, or like a Pills and a Crow or something. And um, it turned out they didn't sell it in the Romney Sands one. <laughs> I went to the bar. And it was like, freaking Madri was the best lager they had. And that's saying something. And I struggle with Madri. It was Madri or Cause Light or Carlin. So there's no way I'm going to buy a pint of Carlin or Cause Light. So it was Madri. And I was just drinking it, thinking, this is shit. I can't believe I just paid six and a half quid for this crap. And that's when the next day I started sneaking in Coronas. Even Corona tasted better than that. And at least it weren't costing me six and a half quid to drink sank shit. It was just costing me like roughly a pound a bottle to drink sank shit. Trust this is for your wank along with Carlin, etc. Yeah. Is I'd, I'd, I'd pick Foster's over Carlin though. If I had to. But then I'll probably pick anything over Carlin. That's not really saying much. The old Desperados taste like fizzy pop. Yeah, I know. I don't know what it is. Like, I wouldn't say I, I love it, but I'd say as far as something as that I know and everything in my body is telling me this is pure crap while I'm drinking it, but I actually don't mind it. it would probably would be Desperados. <laughs> it's a bit of a funny review I did of that actually. I think I did give it a bad rating, but at the same time, I said I don't mind it. It's a bit of a weird one. Uh, 
that's nice steve <laughs> yeah i have the same problem with sleep steve i'm terrible for it it's it's, it's a horrible thing not being out to sleep especially when everyone else is asleep and you're like <laughs> my dad used to drink a lot of bass I think I reviewed that. I actually didn't mind that, actually. Um, one Dragon Soup, one Gordon's Miniatures, two Guinness Stouts, or the Forge. All of them. <laughs> we need independent brewers in the UK. Most of them are brought out by Heineken, Cosworth. Yeah, exactly. Duncan, they're all brought out by the big boys. It's not on, is it? It's getting like so many pubs you go into now, and there's there's no good option. But a lot of people are not, I guess, in to beer enough to really care, and they just drink anything. And that's why they keep doing it because they get away with it. A lot of people just drink to get pissed, I think, and they don't really care what it tastes like. But if you're a beer lover and you actually drink it for the taste and the appreciation of the beer. You think differently, which I think, well, myself, obviously, and a lot of you guys who watch the channel fall into that category, and that's why we're not happy. <laughs> to be fair, though, Peroni is, I'm, I'm, I had a Peroni last night, um, and I discovered that it's a lot better out of a bottle than a can. Even though it smelled really skunky, I, I had it out of a can a few months back. I think I might have reviewed it in the beer battle or something. It was it was shocking. It was horrible. But then I had it out of a bottle last night. It weren't too bad. I poured it into a glass, got rid of the skunkiness. It wasn't too bad. But it was Italian brewed Peroni. Whether the can stuff was brewed somewhere else, I don't think it was brewed in Italy. It might have been brewed in Netherlands or something. But it was a completely different beer. Again, you just don't know what you're buying. This Peroni, it should be the same. No matter where you buy it in the world, it should be the same. Same with Stella, same with any beer. Wherever you buy it in the world, it should be the same product. And it's not, and that's the problem. That's why sometimes you can you, you could drink a beer and you you know you like it, and then another time you think that's crap because it's just a different version of the same beer. Peroni is still imported. Uh, I think it's brewed by Asahi in Italy, Peroni. But this particular can I had tasted completely different to the bottle stuff. I don't think I looked where it's brewed, but I'm sure it wasn't brewed in Italy. This particular can. It was in an off-license, so it might have been like a randomly imported one. Or, I don't know. Piss water for Carlin or something, Rob Alley. Um, yeah, they replaced Stella for Cruz Campo. Oh, Cruz Campo. Oh, mate, seriously. You got rid of Cause Light for Carl's. Cruz Campo is shit. Absolutely shit. All I can taste when I drink Cruz Campo, because I have, I gave it a chance out of a can. I've tried it on tap. And I'll just come to the conclusion that it's absolute wank. It's just so syrupy. It just tastes like syrup. Uh, and that's why people drink it and they like it, the youngsters and that. Because it's sweet. It's full of syrup. It's not good for you. It's full of glucose syrup and it tastes sweet. And it's one of them beers that's kind of for people that don't really like beer. A bit like Corona and stuff, you know, and Budweiser. They don't really taste like much, do they? So a lot of the youngsters drink them out of the bottle. So they can show everyone they're drinking Budweiser. Look at me, I'm well cool. And anybody who actually knows about beer is looking at you thinking you're a tosser. <laughs> <laughs> Left blonde is good on draft. Yeah, if you get it on draft, I think it's still the um, the Belgian one. That's why. Um, but if you get it in the bottles, it's not. It's just 6% stuff. The same as if you drink it on perfect draft, I think it's still the six and a half, six point six one. It shouldn't be, as I say, these different versions of the same product. It's so confusing and it's just wrong. 
Bass was the biggest beer in the world back in the 1800s. Intensity still looks lovely in the glass of, of cask. Shit lager often tastes better skunked. Gives it some hot profile. <laughs> some people like that. Uh, some people like a skunked beer. Funny enough, my brother, Simon, uh, said to him, bro, like, your beer... Your beer choices are so like crap. What's going on with you? Are you drinking like Stella out of a bottle, like the UK brew Stella? I said that's so skunked. So, like, I was uh, went around his ass at a barbecue. I was like, do you not? Do you not taste that skunkiness and smell that skunkiness when you're opening a bottle? He's like, yeah, that's why I like it. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, he actually likes a skunked beer. My local has landlord on cask, four sixty a pint. A lot of local chaps drink UK Moretti. Oh God! I absolutely can't stand Moretti. It used to be alright when it was the Italian stuff. Oh, it's a lot better than what it is now. It's absolutely disgusting. I really struggle with that. It's just that horrible, stringent, nasty taste, metallic. I had a pint of it in the pub about a month ago when I went for a meal, and I couldn't even finish it. I Well, I got halfway down the glass, gave up, and then went to the uh, bar and said, can you stick a top in that because it tastes like shit. And I managed to force it down me just about... Cruise Campos this year is Madri. I think Cruise Campos is even worse than Madri. <laughs> I think Madri over it. And that's saying something. Yes, yeah, this year's fake beer, isn't it? A new fake beer. There was another one I had the other day. I haven't reviewed it yet. I might have to pick it up again to review. But I picked it up from the off license, thinking it was a new Italian lager. I think it was called Viva Roma or something on them lines, something Roma. And it was absolute crap. I drink it, oh, what's this? And I looked at the can, it's brewed in the UK, and it's got added orange or something in it. Oh, God, if you come across that one, don't bother. It's absolutely vile. Really hard work <laughs> drinking that. Some of the Aldi beers are fairly decent. Rossini Grand Reserva is not bad. It's only one ninety nine. Yeah, I agree. Rossini Grand Reserva, I like that. And even the normal Rossini, which is like the their Peroni clone, I actually prefer it over Peroni. The normal Rossini is somewhat. I think some people overlook it and just go for the Grand Reserva, but the normal one's fine as well. Compared to Peroni, anyway, I'm sure I did. Yeah, I think that's you know when I said I had that dodgy can of Peroni have a can i think i'll put it up against rossini and rossini smashed it to bits cruise campo is special on tap in spain the summer is okay yeah but that's a completely different uh beer altogether in it that's why I... me adam are fans of the cheap ryan becker and others yeah ryan becker for the price you pay three pound fifty for four five hundred mil cans, I'd rather drink that than the UK macro stuff like the Cruise Campos, Madrys, and all that. As far as a budget option goes, that's sort of my, one of my go-to budget beers, you know. And uh, Steinhauser, I prefer the Steinhauser, but it's not so budget. Sino Grams over is right, great. I reckon Duncan. I was going to mention that one. Yeah, it's, it's really good. I'm pretty sure I gave that at least a nine when I reviewed it. Maybe even nine points saying I really did enjoy that. It surprised me just how good it was, actually. Skunked Beck smells like weed in a weird way. I like it. Yeah, that's what I mean. It does. It does smell like weed. 
Some people like that smell, don't they? Even some people don't smoke weed. They like the smell of it. There's a huge can still get it found. Narco, to be fair, Adam, I had the uh, Roma the other day for the first time on draft at a mate's 30th, and I thought it was all right, but I knew it was UK brew before I tried it. It might have been better on draft as well. I didn't, I didn't have a can of it. Yeah, it wasn't for me, mate. I couldn't really taste the orange either, to be, to be honest. Steinhauser is just Dortmund a dab export relabeled. That's why I like it then, because I really like Dortmund. <laughs> I think dab's a great beer. They, that was that was in home bargains recently, but it's just pff, gone. Hops are related to weed. Just wish they'd do six sixty little bottles. Yeah. Your, your review of Rossini Grand Reserva was your review of Rossini Grand Reserva was over of the best was the best on YouTube thanks Rob mate I, I haven't watched nobody else's review to be honest um, that might be my favourite German beer it's really nice There's so many good German beers that I, I, I couldn't even tell you what my favourite one is because they're so good. There's not one that sort of stands out to me as like next level compared to all the rest because they're all just so good. It's like it can just come down to what you what you're in the mood for. Um, but what a good problem to have, eh? It's <laughs> got so many good beers that you know you 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 couldn't argue with anybody saying so many different ones is their favourite and you can understand it. Tommy Tank Tommy Tarkov any American beers you like man? American beers um, I was going no, as a Canadian beer Moosehead I quite like that. that was in Home Bargains recently I like American craft beers as far as lagers go and stuff, not really, no, to be honest with you. But the craft, American craft beer that I've tried is really nice. Um, Sierra Nevada, for example. What a fantastic beer that is. Sub 10, Narco has smashed all four packs of dabbing home bargains. Yeah, that's a cracking beer, that one. Uh, Jennifer Cross, going to say something that may get me shot, but Labatt's was good in Canada, but never had a good Yankee beer. Yankee beer. I've not tried that one, Jennifer. Prime out of US is best and worst of beer. <laughs> Michael, God, the comments are coming very fast. Michael Sogan, I've got still an unfiltered bottle. I'll try and pick one up the back of the fridge in the shops. Hopefully, I've got one non skunked version. But if it's skunked, I'll still drink it down. Yeah. So I'd still drink a skunked one, but I actually prefer um, Stella unfiltered out of a can, personally. Because then you just don't get that problem. Uh, Duncan says little beers used to be fairly decent, but some of them have changed. Yeah, Pearl and Bacar used to be decent, and that's crap. The lager, really bad. It's brewed in the UK now, not by German purity law. That's why, and that's what happens, unfortunately. Um, Steve, paramount point taken. I do remember Marston's pedigree back in the 1980s. A uh, great beer then. Now those okay, but not even that good. It used to be. Um, Bottle conditioned as well, but it's not anymore, and that makes a massive difference. I always say, without a, 
You get bottle conditioned beer. It's so much better. I really want to try American Budweiser though. There's stuff in, here in the UK brewed. Yeah, I mean the American version of Budweiser is completely different. I think even I think their Bud Light is about the same strength as our normal Bud. Bud White over here is just complete piss water, isn't it? Yeah, they do make good craft beer, don't they? Expensive can be expensive though. Uh, Rob Alley, I remember your review of Kestrel Super. To be honest, they have reduced the sugar content and it tastes even more rough. <laughs> but it's a good high if you can take the taste. <laughs> yeah, it's like a lot of them super strength beers, isn't it? <laughs> if, you can, if you can force it down, you know, give you a quick buzz, <laughs> even if it tastes bloody horrible. <laughs> but yeah, when I reviewed that, I think I gave it quite a good score, but I was comparing it to other sort of tramps piss category sort of beers like, um, you know, your super tenants and your, uh, what's the Carlsberg one? Special brew, all them sort of ones. And compared to the other ones, the Kopaki, all them kind of ones, I found it more palatable. <laughs> I fucking hate that word. <laughs> Yeah, compared to the competition, I thought it was one of the better ones anyway. That's just me. You've got to do the original check, bud. I've done that. Uh, bud far. Yeah, I've done bud far. It's much better than American bud. Although I do think it's overrated, personally, by far. I like it. For me, it's like an 8 out of 10 lager. Not a 10 out of 10 lager, like a lot of people say. But that's just me. It's just my personal taste. It's more That's more uh, sweet. Um, I prefer more of a Pilsner, a bit of a bitterness. Like I'd, I'd, rather, I'd pick Pilsner Quill over Bud Bar any day. I need to try Sierra Nevada beers. I see their California IP and Tesco. Do you have to figure out? Oh, mate, you should try them. They're, they're really, really good. They're really, really good, mate. Sierra Nevada. Kestrel Super Carpacky, a Rangy Boom Skull. I've not, had, I've not had a Rangy Boom and Skull Super yet. Crest, your favourite is Crest 10%. Oh, definitely had a few hairs to the man brushicles, that one. All right, I'm going to shoot off because I still want to do me live tomorrow. So I don't want to get wankered, but uh, well, I've been going three hours. I haven't actually drunk much. Um, I've had six cans of this little Heineken. So really, it's like half a beer in it. So it's only three beers. Uh, so I'll still be good for tomorrow. So as much as I'm enjoying chatting to you, and I don't want to go, uh, certain people were like, you said you was going live tomorrow. I'm still going live tomorrow. I don't know about that. Um, and I don't want to let those people down. So I'm going to leave it there before things get messy and it might potentially make me not go live tomorrow because um, tomorrow will probably be a longer one. And uh, hopefully some of you guys can make it tomorrow around nine o'clock uh, British time. If, if you're not from the UK, roughly it could be half eight. It could be half nine. But let's say between eight and half nine, I'll be live. Uh, depends whether the kids are doing judo and things like that. Cause I'm not sure yet. Sarah Nevada torpedo, if you can, dude. I'll look out for it, mate. Get some kit, mate. Cheers, people. I really appreciate all of you tuning in and supporting my channel. Like, honestly, you guys are like pucker. And I love chatting to you on these lives. And um, yeah, hopefully I'll catch some of you tomorrow, people. If you if you're a bat, then uh, pop in and say hello. Until then.
Get the fuck out of here. Bye bye, darlings. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Honestly, love you all. And uh, yeah, don't forget tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs>